Hello, hello, hello. <sighs> How's everyone doing today? Can you guys even hear it when it's this low? I turned down the music. I don't even know if you can hear it right now. Hi! I wanted to try a different time of streaming. It's a little earlier, but I want to see how that was for you guys because it's 6 p.m. my time. So my hope is that um, we'll find like a good sweet spot for when I can start the streams. Oh, hi, Deanna Jones. I heard that sound and I was like, it's my cat. She's behind me. Can you guys hear the music right now? I'm just curious because uh, OBS, like, you can hear just fine. The audio is good. Um, okay, let's go ahead and turn down the music here. Oh, I have a few videos already primed for you guys. I think they'll be a lot of fun to go through. And then they'll make really good clips too later. So I'll just make them into clips. Um, but first we're going to watch like a few TikToks together because one of the things that I've noticed after my very happy engagement slash um, marriage. Okay, good. You can't hear it anymore. Okay, noted. Um is that some people were like, wasn't this too soon? This is kind of fast. And I realized like cultural differences are of course real. Like I talk about bubbles all the time, but I think I have found myself in a very specific part of the internet in which uh, my style of courting is not as common, which makes total sense, right? And so I wanted to talk about it today a little bit about, is it about time? Right? When getting married to the right person, is it about time? And I thought we could go ahead and talk about that today. Jewel says three streams in a week. We're spoiled. Honestly, yeah, I, I hope you feel that way. I definitely want to be streaming more, at least making content more. You know, as a content creator, you're really trying to change with the times on YouTube, but you're also trying to change with your vibe. And I just can't decide if I like to stream more or if I like to make, you know, individual videos more or if I just love the feedback from the audience, which is my personal opinion, is that I think I just like talking to you guys. And so I like having your personal feedback as I review a review content. And so I personally like that's the struggle that I have as a content creator is that I actually just love the feedback. And it just makes it feel like such a conversation. And then, of course, I want to encourage people to call into the Discord eventually. And I want to have like a section of time where we really get that going. But I can't do that if I post individual videos, right? Oh, hold on. Before I start, I need a tissue box. My allergies are the worst today. They're just so bad today. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sweet girl. Okay. So, um, I definitely, definitely just love the feedback, right? So the best part about streaming as much as possible is that, um, is the feedback. I love it. Okay. So with that said, um, oh, okay. Violet says Indians traditionally marry before 20 a lot. Yeah, so my mom's generation, I would say, what was the average age? Like 19 to 21? Right? It's like 19 to 21, right? I would say that is that was her average. And then her mom's average was like 12 to 16. And then her kid's average was about 25 to 30. And so it just changes every generation, every cultural difference. But the time hasn't really shifted that much. Um, so I think there's some of that where, you know, I, I talked to Farm Brother today and I asked him just to confirm, you know, because his court style dating really worked for me. I tried modern dating. I tried, uh, you know, apps. I tried dating two to three years, two to five years. I tried living with my partners. None of it worked. And to be fair, I was in my 20s. So I was young and I was a mess. But it's not really about being in my 20s because Farm Brother was uh, 20 and 21. 
And now they're 29 and 30 with four kids and they're very healthy and very happy. Hold on, let me confirm that. Oh, 21 and 22. So she was 21 and he was 22 when they got together. And they are a very successful couple. I think they, again, the vibes of he dated and dated and dated and then met her. And on the first date, he was like, she's the one. And she was like, oh, my gosh, he's the one. And they had been both looking and both interested. And they were looking for something specific, right? And so, again... I think when we're having this conversation, I don't want to put down hard and fast rules about you have to be this age, you have to date this long, you have to, I don't want to put down fast and hard rules about any of those things. It doesn't doesn't seem honest or efficient. When we're talking about the individual experience, we are talking about the possibility for the exception, we're talking about the possibility for the unique, we're talking about the possibility for you as a consciousness to actually get what you need. And that means not putting down far, fast and uh, hard rules. That's why I don't like these ideas of like prescriptions and what's good for society. And like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. All I know is that individuals are having individual experiences with their relationship to existing. And they should and do deserve to have the build a bear relationship in life that they want. And I think that that means that I'm not going to put a number on how old you have to be as long as you're an adult and how um, long you need to be with your partner as long as you're being reasonable and reasonable subjective to the life the lived experience of the person so again it depends on what you're aiming for are you aiming for long-term cohabitation where divorce is off the table except in abusive situations so this is very important a, a divorce in anything i say will always be an option in abusive situations because again we shouldn't be marrying people if you're marrying in my category of marrying where you're not in it for the long haul. If you're doing a different type of relationship, which I absolutely am here for, where you do really intimate short-term relationships, that's also valid, but that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, right? So that is a completely different category of dating. Can, saying, if you take my advice, if you wanna call it that, if you take what I'm saying and apply it to the red pill, it wouldn't make sense, right? So don't take what I'm saying and apply it to short-term relationships, it wouldn't make sense. What I'm saying, only coincides with long-term cohabitation and specifically if you're actually marrying the person that you think is your quote-unquote soulmate your ideal person because again in my bubble you don't get married unless it's that person right Maddox says, I will say what I mostly get from your video streams is what is your purpose searching for a relationship? And I don't know what's so hard to understand. I think, um, you know, I just think people have different ways of imagining a relationship. I think they get stuck in the moment and they think like it's going so well right now. This should be good enough. But I'm talking about something very specific, right? So I'm going to give you guys some examples um, with different bubbles and dating through TikTok and different ways that people are having a relationship with this, right? And so I wanna go ahead and start. Um, okay, so let me pull this up for you guys. I'm so excited to go with, through this with you. Okay, so here I have on my TikTok, I, I save all the things in my favorites that I wanna go and share with you guys. So let me know how the volume is on their TikToks. It might be too loud or too quiet when it first starts. Let me also – let me move that out of the way so you guys can see. So the first one we're going to start off with to start off the vibe is actually – did you guys see the Orthodox Dating Show on Netflix? Really great. I actually think I might recommend it to my parents. But she's a Jewish Orthodox lady who who – pairs couples together who are Jewish and there's a TikTok I found of hers and I want to share it with you guys <clears throat> gosh I feel like I'm getting a little sick I hope I'm not getting sick okay so let me see when you start dating secular religious any okay it's a little quiet to me but tell me when you start dating secular religious okay we're gonna play this because it's only 41 seconds here I'm gonna boost up the volume are you ready 
when you start dating secular religious anybody jewish not makes no difference you will know within six months from the beginning of your dating until the six month mark if this is my person or not so you think that six months should be the limit so much you date before getting engaged no i think that's the approximately limit. no i think that's the limit for when you should know if this is your person choosing the timeline for engagement there's different variables and reasons why people wait or don't wait sometimes families it's complicated location it's complicated job it's con there's complications but if you don't know it's your person by six months then it's to me well what don't you know you have there you do not usually need more data than six months worth of data to make an informed decision of of your thinking and your feeling and when you start dating secular okay did you guys all hear that how do you feel about it so initially obviously she's saying you need six months worth of data but how do you go about getting the data, right? Oh, shoot. Let me see, actually. Let me grab you. Okay, you guys ponder that while I go look for this other clip I want to show you. Wait. I don't think I have it yet. Hold on. <coughs> Oh, shoot. I don't think my partner sent it to me. Can you send me that clip about the relationship with the guy? Oh, please. Hopefully his Discord is up. Hello, sir. Send me this clip, please. Um, I wonder if I could find it. Okay, let's see if my partner can send me this clip. Hmm. Hold on. I'll be right back. I need to ask him for it. Hold on. Okay, so when we're hearing this, have you guys have you guys contemplated it? Um, okay, so six months, right? Six months to know someone is her timeline. And you could ask yourself, like, what could you possibly know about someone in six months, right? It depends on how much you're communicating and what you're communicating. I think in life, we have this confusion about what communication looks like. I have spent so much time with people and to them, it does feel, oh, hold on. So I think what's happening is that people are underestimating how much they can or can communicate. The file, I can't find the original video I was going to show you guys. So I'll just verbalize it to you. I saw the story. Um, I saw a story. You guys can hear me now, right? I had to mute because my partner walked in. Um, Sorry, my, par my partner walked in, so I had to mute. Okay, I'm back on, right? I'm back on. Okay, so I heard the story yesterday about a girl who was confused. She's 25. She's dating a guy who's 35. And they've been dating for like two years or something like that. A really a long time, a good span of time. And he has a friend who's 17, a 17 year old girl, right? Or she'd been dating him for enough time, right? And she asked him about this relationship she he has with this 17 year old girl. He's 35. And she goes, well, why do you have that friendship? And he goes, well, that's not really important, is it? Like, I don't know why you think I'm doing something with her. I don't know why you're assuming something is wrong. Like, I don't know why you're assuming, um, like you need to know anything, like everything's fine. And this girl goes, I love this guy, right? 10 year gap relationship, red flag a little bit. Okay. Age gap relationships can be a red flag depending. And not all of them, of course. So 
here it is, this girl who's like, I'm getting an icky feeling that my 35-year-old boyfriend is friends with a 17-year-old girl and texts her every day. And I agree with that. I also get the ick. I also think that's super inappropriate and it shouldn't happen. Unless this girl's a family friend who grew up with him, like, in his siblings. Unless she's a cousin. Unless she's related to him. Like, why are they having a relationship, right? Super sussy. But when she asks him about it, he refuses to engage in the conversation. Refuses to converse. And she literally said he's perfect except for this relationship. His, the friendship he has with the 17-year-old. The fact that he won't communicate with her, the fact that he's perfect, except he's not willing to be honest with her about this relationship, they're not willing to discuss it, super red flag. She could be with this guy for another five to 10 years. And unless they are actually having the real conversations, unless they are being completely transparent and honest, then it doesn't matter how much time they've been together. They're never going to know each other. You can be with someone for 20 years and never know them if you're both not being vulnerable and talking it through. So it doesn't matter if you're with someone for 10 months or 10 years. What matters is what conversations have you had? What is the relationship you're having with that person? Again, when I hang out with people my age, they think it's really weird that I don't lie to my partner. And I understand that because in my 20s, everybody was lying. In my 20s, I was lying to my partners. Literally, I was so ashamed that I had been assaulted, I did not tell anybody. So when my partners asked me, and they would be like, Brittany, you're acting like kind of a a grape victim. Do you have trauma? And I'd be like, no, you're crazy. I was denying a level of vulnerability with my partners, thus creating a relationship built on lies. You know what I mean? Whether you think it's justified because I had PTSD undiagnosed, whether you think it's justified because I was graped and I didn't want to share it, it didn't matter. I was asking another adult person to make a life with me in which I couldn't even be honest and allow them to sign up for the actual relationship they were signing up for. So yes, this is a lesson we learn in life, but it's much different when you go into a relationship now and on the first date, you're like, hey, this is my medical history. Here's what my bank account looks like. Here's what my life looks like. Here's what I'm doing. That is a very different relationship. So yes, of course you only need six months. Of course you only need maybe even the first date to know if that person's compatible with you. If you're willing to let a first date last eight hours because you're having the real conversations and not just having the greatest first date and you're making it romantic and chemistry and you're not having the real conversation. Guys, if you avoid the real conversations, you could fall in love with the image of anybody. If you're not having the real conversations with yourself, you could settle into any relationship. You know, I always joke with some of my callers, like I would make a great partner for most people, but most people aren't going to make a great partner for me because I'm the one who's specific. Most people just say they want someone who's kind and watches anime with them. Okay, that's like a billion people. That is the easiest thing to find, but that's not really what you want, is it? You don't really just want someone who's going to be nice to you, do you? Because you could just get a dog. Like you could hire a sex worker. Like you don't really just want... And if you do, that's great. You do you. But I think people are in denial of what they actually want and they don't want to ask for it because they don't want to face the reality that they may not find it. And so they play this game of, well, maybe if I just stop asking for the ideal, I'll get someone and someone is better than no one. Okay, so now (laughs) Slay says people dating now aren't authentic with their partners yet wonder why their partner isn't either. Nobody has been authentic in the history of dating. That's why love marriages were special, unique, and minority. That's why love marriages were rare because most people didn't have to be honest with their partners. Most people were married off for through a business deal, right? It was like business, family unification or family uniting, building brands, building wealth, building like status. That's not the same. Love marriages were rare. And now love marriages are instead of people just genuinely being in love, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet. Like what an immature fucking relationship, right? Romeo and Juliet is a lovely story, but it's really silly, right? If they had just thought about it for 2.5 seconds, they could have been alive and together, but they were too wrapped up in the codependency, the romance of it, the poetry of it, that they died. But they didn't have to, right? But the thing is like, also like they had to be who they were because it is what it is. Like everyone is who they are because it is what it is. But if you enact your free will, if you have a relationship with your consciousness, if you start asking yourselves, like, what if I want what actually facilitates my joy, right? Then we can talk about it. Um, What is a reasonable ideal? Great question. A reasonable ideal facilitates your joy, not your selfish wants, your selfish joy. So your healthy joy, your healthy selfish, right? So I think a reasonable ideal 
is an ideal related to values, is a re ideal related to your sense of character, an ideal is related to your sense, a reasonable ideal is related to your sense of healthy joy, not your unhealthy codependency, not the part of you that's in denial, not the part of you that doesn't want to face your relationship, not the part of you that wants to, you know, not the negative unhealthy parts of us. That's why when partners give sort of an ultimatum, it's like it can be healthy or unhealthy. An ultimatum given within values, hey, if you have friendships as a 40 year old man with 16 to 17 year old women girls girls maybe this is an ultimatum for me and i think that's a reasonable healthy ultimatum i think it is super unhealthy and a, a huge red flag that grown men want to be friends with girls in high school what are you doing do you know these girls why do you even why do you want to talk to children don't you think that's sussy and the fact that like some people are like ultimatums are never healthy, call it what you want. Maybe it's boundaries, maybe it's values, maybe it's whatever. But yeah, if you're willing to be friends as a grown up with people in high school, something is developmentally wrong with you, you are swimming in trauma probably, or you're a predator, right? So either you're developed, stunted, which I saw a lot growing up. So many times I worked in a grocery store and the, these 16 year old kids would be like from millionaire families and they would throw parties and our managers were there. I was there. Like our managers were there in their 30s and they were definitely stunted. Their maturity levels were so low. They were so stunted. They weren't predators, but they were so stunted as people, 100 billion percent. So again, what is a reasonable ideal? Something that's healthy and facilitates your healthy joy, right? I think we're often unreasonable because we're unhealthy and we don't realize it. And we cope through that process and we say like, I, I know what I want. I want something that's just so different. You can have something that's so different and still be healthy. So many of my polyamorous open relationship friends are living the most healthy, wonderful lives. They're like some of my favorite people on the planet. They have incredible relationships with people. They're open, honest, consent-based. They're very much within a healthy bubble of open and poly. But then on the other side of it, there's all these people who are so unhealthy, who are only open and poly because they're coping. Only poly and open because they can't stop themselves from cheating. So unhealthy. So you can see it's not the poly or the open that makes it automatically unhealthy, right? It's why you're having a relationship with that type of relationship. So like I'm monogamous, right? Because that's the healthiest, most ideal situation to facilitate the joy of my partner and I. Not because of... Um, like just because it works for us, right? We, we talked about every option. We talked about what would work for us. And again, like negotiating is important. You're negotiating for the moment. You're allowed to change in your relationships along with your partner. You're allowed to say to your partner, hey, can we negotiate for something different? And then you can go ahead and negotiate for something different, but you still have to consent in the moment. So you're not being that partner who's cheating, lying, deceiving, manipulating, gaslighting. You don't want to be the partner that says yes to your partner. I consent to this. And then behind their back, resent them, become bitter, you know, uh, just start to twist your own narrative of how you see them in your head to justify being cruel to them, right? You don't want to do that. Okay. Um, I watched an Abba and Preach video where Abba said you will real you – you will never really know someone. And I think you can have a long lasting loving relationship where you keep some things a secret. So uh, I think Wick said that too. Who was it? Who said that on the 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 panel I was just on? They said, um, I'm not sure you can ever know someone. I think those are people who don't know themselves. So they can't imagine you could know someone else. I would argue if you're in the same bubble that I'm in of people who are really, really introspective and they are getting to know themselves and are willing to admit their faults and admitting when they're coping and admitting when they're being unhealthy, I think if you're in a specific mindset, you can know yourself and allow somebody to be vulnerable enough to let you know them. So I do think that only comes from a very specific perspective, right? Maiden Monster with the major super chat. Thank you so much, girly. Congratulations on your marriage. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a huge, generous super chat. Thank you, girly. $99.99. Thank you. I really appreciate that so much. I'm so happy to see you. I adore you. You know I do. I do think, though, when you're looking at different couples and they say, or individuals who say, like, you can never know someone, 
what you're really saying is you can never know yourself. And I know that to be blatantly false, right? Because I'm always on the journey of knowing myself, even through my changes. And there's always stuff I'll know about myself that was a mystery to myself. But that doesn't mean you don't know yourself. It just means you know yourself to an extent. And you'll always know yourself better every moment you try. You'll know yourself and your partner better the moment you open up and facilitate a safe environment for them to share those things with you, right? Allow them to brainstorm with you. Allow them to throw things at the wall with you. Like my siblings. My siblings and I know each other really freaking well you know give it a couple of them because they're not always in our lives right we're kind of far apart we don't live in the same cities anymore but the like my sister and I we're always talking always throwing stuff at the wall we're always being very vulnerable with each other we're always telling each other so much about ourselves like human beings are not that mysterious y'all you're only mysterious if you're if you're not paying attention right like you you have to have a relationship with your consciousness and an honesty that allows you to be vulnerable. The thing is, is that most of us aren't vulnerable with most people. I'm certainly not. Even with my inner circle, I'm not completely 1000% vulnerable with them because it's inappropriate to do so. The only person I am doing that with is my partner. And then, of course, they have to understand the context. So the reason that they might not be able to see you or understand you is because they can't see parts of you. But since, like, my partner and I, as an example, can see such specific parts of each other, it's he can literally translate for me so perfectly my thoughts. Like, genuinely, he just understands. He always says, like, you're so bad at saying what you mean. But I know what you mean. You mean this. I was like, yeah, that's what I said. He's like, that's not what you said. I was like, that is what I said. He's like, no, that's what you thought you said. But you need to say it like this. I was like, but you got it. The fact that he understands me goes, eh, good enough. Right? Because like he got what I meant to say. He can he can reverbalize my thoughts to myself. When people can't reverbalize my thoughts to me in a very specific way, then I know they didn't get it. Right? Like I think that's what's so interesting. Like even on that panel I was with, with Irrelevant and Wiccan Everybody, great panel, had so much fun, want to do it again. Irrelevant is really good at translating for me as well. If you guys haven't seen it, Irrelevant and I have a video we did together on my levels and stuff. That video is one of my favorite videos. People really don't like, I think they didn't watch it or something, but Irrelevant can translate for me so well. He's such a good communicator and he's really good at like, you know, fleshing out ideas with you. So if you ever want to see my, you know, somebody else do it, Irrelevant can do it. Now, he might not be able to see every part of me, but he he can see more parts than I think the average person can see of other people, uh, you know, in my opinion. Okay, so let's go to your comments. Whoo. Okay, let's see here. Also, oh, hold on, Discord. I just saw your chat. Ah, Discord said, I believe it's more about timing than the amount of time together. I think it would be better to say that it takes six months to know if someone is a realistic option. I think that's fair. Um, people want to be seen in their relationships, but a lot of us are not used to being seen by anyone in our lives. It's easier. To, it's easy to believe you have no right to ask for that. True. True. Um, another person said, I definitely think being unpartnered is better than being with the wrong person, but so many of my friends made the choices that made me think that most people would rather be the, with the wrong person than alone. True. Right. Um, Discord uh, said, I sometimes read my old journals and sometimes I think, damn girl, you knew it really taught me to trust my gut more. Yes. Learning to trust my gut really helped me as well realizing like I might not be able to explain why I'm right but I swear to god I'm right a lot of the time like I'm gonna make predictions right now right that like in a few months I I can't always explain what's going on but I'm telling you right now that's why I'm not too worried when people are like judging me harshly on the internet because I'm like eh, you'll see that I'm right in like six to twelve months I'm good and I swear to god I know why because well one I have more information but two there's something about people that I see where I'm like I feel like you're lying to me but you're not lying to me I feel like you are saying what you think is honest, but it's not really what's happening, but it's what's happening clear enough in your own consciousness that you think it's the only thing that's happening. But give it six to 12 months and the truth will be clearer. But the problem is, is like, if you can't, it was like, Tom, Tom Fullery said something really interesting. He said like, you are what you do, but I don't really believe that about people because I know people do things that are in contrast to their inner joy. So I would argue, yes, you are what you do, but also you're, if you're not working within your joy, I'm not sure you are who you are. So this is the problem with my work. I think your most honest version of your consciousness 
The only real version of your consciousness is the one that is joyful and healthy. If you are not joyful and you are not healthy, you are not your real self. You are a version of yourself that is trapped in the cycle of trauma and abuse and darkness and you are swimming your way out of it, hopefully, or you will stay trapped in it. But I do not believe that my best, like my version of Brittany, my consciousness is real when I'm triggered. I don't think I am myself when I'm drunk. I don't think I'm who I am when I'm sleep deprived. I think I am a consciousness that's being twisted by another source. But if I'm joyful and I'm happy, then you should judge that Brittany. That's the Brittany you should be talking to because she's the most real version of herself. We had this discussion in the VC one time where I don't like to interact with people when I'm out of spoons because I become very mean. When I'm out of spoons, I become short with everyone. I become very unnecessarily cruel. And I just say the like the meanest things. And it's because I'm out of spoons. And so my body is just dead inside. And somebody would say, well, that's the real Brittany because that's the ugly version of you. But it's not the real version of me because it's not the version I want to be. It's not within my values. It's out of my control sometimes. It's why I give such leniency to people when I say they're going through something because when you're going through something, you're genuinely trapped with a blinder on. You cannot even fathom having a different opinion or being a different kind of person or expressing yourself in a different way, right? If you're so trapped in your own ego even, you don't have the opportunity to have a relationship with a version of yourself that's more honest. So you're lying to yourself, which Tom is right. You are what you do to an extent because if you're lying to yourself good enough, cognitive dissonance, you are and can play out that character for the whole duration of your existence. Totally. But my job, I think, is to encourage people to be like, hey, do you know you have a di- you can have like a different relationship with your consciousness? You don't have to if you don't want to keep doing you. But did you know like you don't have to live this way? And they're like, no, I have to. I have to live this way. This is the only way I can live. OK, sure. OK, great. You do you. But it's not. If you think there's only one way you can ever live and you've never tried anything else. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, Okay, so let's go to. Okay, so now should see it. Okay, so now, so that was the Orthodox Jewish lady who hosts her show on Netflix. She said, you should know within six months of dating someone whether or not they're your forever person. And I agree with this. If you're courting, serious about long-term cohabitation in a healthy, healthy position in life. And you're being very honest with yourself and them, right? Okay. Let's go to this lady. Okay. So I want to show you how dating changes in different bubbles, right? This is a conservative bubble. So I don't know if liberals realize that Republicans are constantly speaking to each other in code out in public. Leave little clues for each other that only we will pick up on so we can identify each other out in the wild. I call this the quiet code. I mean, there is a whole conservative world happening around liberals that they just actually don't pick up on. It's kind of like the muggles in Harry Potter when they just don't notice all the magic happening around them. Like when they see people walking through brick walls and train stations. What are some examples of this quiet code? First and foremost, if a guy has moderate as his political views in a dating app, then ladies, he is a keeper because he is most likely a Republican. There are other subtle indications that you are politically simpatico. If a guy drives any kind of pickup truck, or if his love language is sending tweets, especially if his username is something like user12437. That is legacy from the pre-Elon days when we were all afraid to like anything or risk getting locked out of our accounts. If they're ever wearing anything from Orvis or Bass Pro Shop. If they have the All In Pod or Joe Rogan as recently played in their Spotify. If they watched Yellowstone or are into grilling. If they have a sudden newfound favor of Bill Maher, like in the last two years. If they stop at Bucky's on road trips. If they have books or ever reference Jordan Peterson or David Goggins. And if they have any kind of American flag on their clothes or on their car. But that one's just a dead giveaway at this point. So I don't know if liberals realize. Okay, so this is great examples of bubble dating, bubble hopping, bubble awareness. The funny thing is like she thinks like, do you think conservatives are the only ones doing this girl? So obviously this is true, right? When I hear people talk, it signals to my brain what bubble they're in and how I can connect with them. That's why I fell in love with my partner almost like very quickly because the way he spoke about things made me go, oh, you're in my bubble or oh, our bubbles overlap or oh, like we have things in common. When I was younger, 
right? You're right. A pickup truck would have been a good sign because I was more conservative, right? I was born and raised a Republican, right? Um, when I was younger, like any of these, she's right. Any of these things would have been like, oh, cool. We have this in common. Great. Um, uh, a good example is like the Bill Maher thing. It's true. If I hear anyone tell me they like Bill Maher now, I go, oh, you're a Republican. If you told me you like Bill Maher 20 years ago, I'd say you were a liberal. Because I used to watch, like my parents hated Bill Maher growing up and now the conservatives like him. This is bubbles. This is the conservative bubble. And you're right. We're signaling to each other all the time who we are and what we want, right? Her generalizing is sad to be honest, but it's not. It's a perfect uh, communication tool. It's a perfect communication tool. If you like Jordan Peterson, you're going to want to be compatible with other people who like Jordan Peterson and are willing to listen to him and go to his shows with you and be a part of that bubble. When I was in the Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity bubble, I would like thrive off meeting people who also love them, right? It's hard to imagine conservative Britney. I will un I will share some old conservative content from Britney. I have it all saved. It's outrageous. But yeah, I used to be this hardcore Republican. I would use Republican language. I would literally talk about libtards and feminazis. That was me out of high school. That was me in high school. I was part of the Republican club in high school and a little bit outside of it. So check out this bubble. So that's the conservative bubble. This is the oh, progressive hey, I just bubble. Got back from the gender new this is the progressive bubble. This guy's whole shtick is testing the waters when I meet someone new to see if we get along, right? He's doing the same thing she's doing, but for friends and dating. Oh, hey, I just got back from the gender neutral bathroom. I love this place too. I heard they pay their workers a livable wage. Hmm, actually these prices are a little high for me. Abort! <laughs> oh, hey, I just got back from the gender neutral bathroom. Do you get what I'm saying? It's funny because it's true when you're, t when you're hanging out with someone, if you're trying to vet them, to see if you guys are going to get along, you would throw some language in there to see if you guys are on the same page or you would just listen for how people talk about things to see. Like I watched this Cody Co video the other day that got kind of political and the way the guy spoke, I was like, oh, someone's a Republican. What's up, bro? And even the way other people heard him, they're like, oh, he's like anti-immigrant, even though he was an immigrant because he was the kind of immigrant that was Republican right? Like my parents, my parents are Republican immigrants. So they're like, make sure you come over the border legally. Like they're those Republicans, but that is a Republican stance. And that's why libertarians and oh, can I play it again? Yeah, I'll play it again. That's why libertarians centrists are most likely Republicans, right? Oh, hey, I just got back from the gender neutral bathroom. I love this place too. I heard they pay their workers a livable wage. Hmm. Actually, these prices are a little high for me. Abort! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I just that's my favorite one. Abort. And then it's like, that's what you're doing. Same with religion, by the way. When I was a Catholic and I was thinking about dating Catholic, though, that was never going to happen. Let's be real. I would always pay attention to like how Catholic were they? Because if you were like once a year Catholic, useless. If you were a Catholic that had sex before marriage, useless. What good were you? If you know, you know what I mean? If you were a Catholic who wasn't being Catholic, like what the fuck? What was the point, girls? What was the point? Um... Magic Dragon says, do you think class heavily shapes your bubble to the point where it's hard to date outside of your financials class? It can. So financial, uh, where you are, middle class, upper middle class, poor, poverty, when you're having a relationship with these bubbles, you're forming how you talk, you're forming how you integrate, you're forming how you understand. I have a friend who grew up in like the upper middle class bubble or, well, it depends on how you look at it. So, okay, here's the problem. So I grew up in a neighborhood that had poverty no, that's a lie. I grew up in a neighborhood that had poor, middle class. Mm, that's also maybe a lie. No, I grew up in a, a direct neighborhood that had lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, rich, like million dollar homes. And our homes were 200,000. So the middle class, their homes were like 200,000 and the rich people next door to us, their homes were a million, okay? So... When I was growing up, I had friends who were all. So I had a friend who was lower middle class. My family was, I would say, lower middle class, middle class. My friends were like upper middle class because their parents made like $200,000 a year with one or two or three kids. My parents were making $100,000 eventually with 10 kids. And then my other friends, their parents were making like 30 k with four kids. Okay, so very different lifestyles, but we were all in the same neighborhoods. And then, of course, across the way, we had the rich kids that none of us really knew because they were in the million-dollar homes, right? And they didn't want to hang out with us. Like, they didn't want anything to do with us. We were on the wrong side of the tracks. 
And eventually my friends and I grew up and we all made different kinds of friends. And one of my friends who grew up in the same group I did, though her family had more money, um, she became friends with somebody from a uber super rich family. I mean, I'm talking billions, right? I'm talking B. And and they and I had a conversation about I was like, you could never take me to meet your family, right? He's like, oh, no. And I was like, but you'll take my homie. And he's like, yeah, I can take her because she'll know how to pass off as like rich. But you just scream like socially inept. And I was like, <laughs> OK. And it's true. Like I don't play by the rules. I don't care who's in charge. I don't understand what fork to use with what or what spoon to use with what. I cross my legs and I'm not supposed to as a woman. If we had to dance with a boy, I would lead the dance. Like I get it. And that's the thing. Is like financial back, like where you come from financially can impact culture. And that's why I personally do value middle class living or even lower class, lower middle class living, because that's where I come from. And I think it's a vibe. But yeah, like I have been faced with people who have told me like, you can't come. You can't come. You'll blow our cover. You'll make us look bad. You won't play the game. And I was like, yeah, cool. And it's true. Oops, I'm sorry. I still have a night bot on for Tom's channel. He shouldn't have that on. Let me turn it off. But yeah, there is there is a reality that finances matter. Actually, I read, I don't know if you guys saw this Reddit post one time. There was a Reddit post that said, um, hold on, let me turn this off. Okay. There was a Reddit post one time that had a story of a guy who said, hey, I don't know how to feel about this. My girlfriend and I have been dating for a long time. We are definitely committed. We don't share our finances. And I come from a very wealthy family. We're going on vacation with my family. And my girlfriend worked two jobs just to save up to go on this trip with my family and I. And uh, we're doing a part of the vacation that's very, very expensive. And she can't afford it. And I don't. I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? Like she's she's um, basically he he didn't say he wanted to pay for her. He basically was implying that she should feel comfortable not going since she can't afford it. And in my brain, I was like, OK, like what what is that? Like what bubble is that where you don't just combine money with your long term girlfriend and you don't just pay for her to go with you? Is it a rich bubble that's so afraid of gold digging that they would be willing to let his girlfriend, who has a real job, she already has a set career, she just doesn't get paid a lot, right? Is it a bubble that says, I am so afraid of gold diggers, I won't even trust a person who's a teacher for a living? Is it, because I think she was like a teacher, I can't remember, but I remember it being like a real job. It was just like a bad paying job, right? For that kind of living. So again, the conversation is, what should have been his obligation to his girlfriend? And again, I come from middle class living where like my money is your money. There is no fear that we're going to like steal each other's money because we're in this together. We come from a similar background. We understand. You know what I mean? So I just I I think when you're dating, you have to have a conversation about like how compatible are we? How do we see money? Like my partner and I, we didn't combine finances until we lived together. That was OK. So he, we had a couple of rules. Basically, no combining finances till we live together, um, not living t with each other until we were committed, like for marriage, right? So we got engaged um, and I had to watch One Piece. <laughs> and those are like the, the, the major things that we had to do before versus before I lived with partners and I didn't want to live with a partner again just to break up and move their stuff out because what a pain in the ass. And I was making enough money that I could fly to Europe every like six months if I had to to see him and he could fly to me, right? Because, you know, he had money and he had a good job and everything. And so the thing is, is, like, we were already established in our own careers, our own apartments, our own life, that I don't think either of us wanted to uproot ourselves for the possibility of a relationship that wouldn't go anywhere just to test it out. We didn't need to do that. We're too old and too knowledgeable about our consciousness to, like, do that. So we didn't have to. But money was something that we really were very particular about because, one, he didn't want to give me the, I think – idea that he was using me for my money because um, I've always made more money than my partners. And two, I didn't want to give him the impression that I didn't respect his like where he was living and his job and his life because he already made a life for himself. And I didn't want to make him change his whole life for somebody that wasn't the real deal and vice versa. I mean, guys, dating internationally is changing your whole life. Like it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Immigration process, dealing with the governments, like that's a big commitment and we weren't going to make it loosely. 
And I think a lot of it came from, again, how we saw money, how we saw consent, how we saw boundaries. So everyone's going to be different. But I, I, of course, like where you come from plays a role, right? Ugh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my allergies today suck. Ah, uh, Okay. Nation says, Britt, I haven't tuned in for a long time. Happy to see you streaming and married. Thank you. Question about Destiny, if it's all right. Is there a bridge to ever be built ever? Okay. So again, I don't know. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I'm pleased with how I handled it that day, but genuinely I was overwhelmed. I've already told everyone I'm happy to talk to Destiny. Tell her I said so. I cannot reach out to him. He burned the bridge and told me not to contact him. I have gotten no direct messaging from him. I cannot break his consent. You guys know the foundation of my belief system is consent. I cannot violate his consent and be like, be friends with me, even if you don't want to. Like, I don't know what bubble y'all live in where people literally are like, just do it anyways. I don't live in that reality. I cannot ask somebody to talk to me who's burned the bridge and banned me and unfollowed me from Twitter and literally like made it clear he thinks I'm the worst person ever. Why do you think I can just reach out to him? I'm not saying you in particular, but like literally I have never gotten clear consent to reach out to Destiny. So I'm not going to reach out to him ever unless he literally says, Brittany Simon and I will, will rebuild this bridge. Then I'll talk to him. But until Destiny does that, I'm not going to violate his consent. Period. Period. That would be so against my values, right? It would be just so against my values. He's the one who ended the friendship. I never ended that friendship, right? So why would I bother him, right? Why would I bother him? It's just so strange. I already reached out to Melina. She and I are good, I think. We're negotiating like boundaries and everything. I already reached out to Kyla. We're good. I already reached out to everybody in the sphere. We're good. Abba and I are good. Everyone is good, okay? If Destiny would like to rebuild the bridge, he needs to message me because I'm not the one who put down the boundary for no contact, <laughs> okay? I'm not the one who put down that boundary. Okay, so again, when we're talking about, I guess that's a good bubble example, right? I think for a lot of bubbles, you do break consent. Your girlfriend breaks up with you and says, never contact me. And then you do show up at her door. Your friend ends a friendship with you. So you do end up at their door. I don't play those games. You don't want me in your life. I'm totally okay with that girl. You know what I mean? Okay, so, okay, I have more. Let's see. Okay, so this is another one I saw that again, right um this is another bubble about dating that i think is important there's so many men that don't like women but they're sexually unattracted to men and they have no choice but to deal with you and they act like it don't they mm -hmm. like these men don't like women for real they don't bond with women they don't emotionally connect with women they prefer to be around men they respect men they get along with men they see men as their equals they do not view you as it but the only reason they're with you is because they're not sexually attracted to the men. If it wasn't for sex or power, they wouldn't be with you. I need y'all to watch out for these men. Like, actually, like, inquire about whether this man, this man actually like women. Not, not if you're heterosexual. My question to you is, do you actually like women? There's so many men that don't like women. This is so important. Hold on, let me move Discord and move it over. So I can see your guys' chat. Literally, this is so important. I think this is the fresh and fit vibe I get from Myron. I don't get it from fresh very much, but I get it from Myron. Myron gives me the vibe that he doesn't like women. And I think he says that. He doesn't care about their emotions. He doesn't care about their feelings. He doesn't care about whether they orgasm. He doesn't care about their joy. Myron's a great example of that. Myron really, really, really really loves men. His book is dedicated to men. His life is dedicated to men. Men are his life. He surrounds himself by men. He trusts men. He even says he emotionally will go to his boys, but never his girls. So he is a man's man. He's not gay, as far as I know. He's not attracted to men, as far as I know. But he is the kind of man that doesn't like women. But he's horny and needs to get off or slash he has a philosophy that says I have to fuck at least 50 women, right? So then, where's that other video I had? 
Oh, shoot. Do I not have it? No. I had a video of Myron. Did I not save it? <gasps> I might not have saved it. Oh, poop a doop. Okay, I might not have saved it. But either way, I think that's really, really important to recognize is that not everybody actually likes like men or women. Even females, even women will hate men, think men are disgusting, and, and they'll even say like, oh, I can't believe I have to be straight over this. And they'll do the same thing. They'll use men for money. They won't care about men. They won't invest in men's feelings. It's just a thing that has to be, um, it's, just a, it's just a type of person. It's just a category of type of person. You know what I mean? Um, Jules says, I had to, I have to imagine that's because they're either emotionally unavailable to have deep relationships of any kind. And usually the relationship with your partner is the deepest one you have. Yeah, maybe. I think there's just so many reasons or they're deeply sexist. I think they're probably just deeply sexist. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with like vulnerability. Yes. But also like deeply sexist. Right. Um, I think that's a big part of it. Right. Yeah. I think that's something that I would really encourage everyone to figure out is that, uh, like why do you, that's what I'm saying. I think that's, I said that on the panel with Wick. Again, I, I can't wait to do more panels, but why do people even want a friend, a relationship or a friendship? Like, what are you really asking from people when you say, I would like to have a friendship with you? I would like to have a relationship with you. Are you asking for somebody to be what? Honest, open, um, hobby based? Are you asking for people just to like, yes, man, you? Are you asking for people to grow old with you, to b build a house or buy a house with you? Like, what are you asking for, right? And I think that's the thing is that I don't think people know. And so they kind of mimic what other people are doing and like, I want to fall in love like this. I want to fall in love like this. But they don't even know what the this is, right? Here's another video I wanted to show you. It Different says, bubble. if you're unsure about your relationship, try asking yourself these five. I really hate the music in the background of this video. It really hurts my ears. I'm so sorry for everyone else who is like me and sensitive to that. Oh my gosh. Hi, Sam. Welcome to the memberships. Thank you for being here. Five honest questions. One, if someone told you you're a lot like your partner, would this be a compliment to you? Two. Wow. Is the music as bad for you as it is for me? It is so loud. Two, are you truly fulfilled or just less lonely? Three, are you able to be unapologetically yourself or do you feel the need to show up differently to please your partner? Four, are you in love with who your partner is right now as a whole or are you only in love with their good side, their potential or the idea of them? And then five, would you want your future slash imagined child to date someone like your partner? Okay, that music is so bad. It's so loud. But I think um, I think the important part is like, would you want your child to date your partner? I'll tell you this. This is this. This is the true story of <sighs> kind of how I ended up having like a big realization in my life. I was dating somebody who I had and I brought uh, multiple partners home to my family. I was dating someone that I brought home to my family one time and I have a person in my life that's like a one. They're like useless, right? They won't eat the cupcake, right? P.S. Merch coming very soon. They won't eat the cupcake. No matter how many resources, no matter how much education, no matter what, they just will not self-improve. They will not contribute. They will not. It's just amazing. And one time my partner, I had had them over and my family was really blunt about they didn't like him. They didn't think he was good enough for me. They didn't think he made me healthy. They thought he, that he brought out the worst in me, blah, blah, blah. I was like, he's just sick. He needs to go to therapy. I can get him help. You know, what a, <laughs> what a toxic little fixer I was. And the partner to the one in my family came up to me and she was like, oh, look at our guys just like really working on themselves. They're so alike, aren't they? And I was like, what? And she was like, they're so alike. And I was like, what? What did you say? And she goes, don't you see it? And I was like, well, now I fucking do. And I was like, oh, no. Like, is my partner like the one in my family? And then I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then I started to have like all these like, oh, my God. Like, I couldn't see it. Like, my, I was just so looking at the situation with like fixer glasses. I just like couldn't see it where I was like, oh, my God. 
I'm going to because I look at the person in my family like their life and I'm just like I cannot do this like it is very toxic it's very bad and then I looked at my partner and I went are they in the same category of type of person oh uh uh-uh and within a month we broke up officially and I never talked to him again and I realized like our last fight was that I was trying to figure out if he was like the one in my family and I was like are you like this is this what you're like right and I was like trying to figure it out and I ended up testing him over the cheating thing and he ended up basically saying like I take back I take it back I was I I I had the right to cheat on you I was allowed to cheat on you I felt like I was pushed into a quarter and that's why I did it and I was like okay thank you I would like to break up and he was like wait what and I was like yeah and he's like you're pathetic you're like I can't believe you're doing this to me I can't believe you're like leaving me I can't believe you're doing this you're abandoning me again you're abandoning me again you're abandoning me and I was like yeah I'm gonna yeah, I'm going to choose me. And then I left and I blocked and I never, never contacted again, right? And I realized that I could have had that life. And I'm so glad that's not my life now because it's a very hard life to date somebody who's never wrong, who does horrible things and then claims like, oh, they were sick. They were the ones who were mentally ill. You did this to me. You made me do it somebody who can't take responsibility, it's very difficult being in that cycle. And so I realized like, oh, I you're not going to get better, right? Like this isn't this isn't someone who goes to therapy and actually gets better. And so I realized that and I was like, okay, I'm good. So sometimes it is important to make sure you know what category of person you're with because it can change your perspective instantly, like it did with me. It popped my bubble. My bubble was shattered. I was like, holy crap. I'm dating somebody that will never actually get better. That sucks. That's really sad, right? It's really sad. Okay. Now. Is that all I want to show you in this friend? Oh, this one's so funny. Okay. Another dating bubble. Really? Hi, Chance. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, ready? Another dating bubble. I'm just okay, so it's like the Ken song. I don't know if I'm going to actually get um, demonetized for this, so I'm going to actually mute it. Sorry. It says, how I feel when I leave my very small curated queer bubble and I'm no longer considered hot. This is important. This is what I'm talking about. First of all, everyone uses the word bubble, right? I'm just using it enough to make people annoyed by it, but it literally is a thing. and I don't know why people don't understand it. But she gets it, how I feel when I leave my very small, curated, queer bubble and I'm no longer considered hot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You go different places and you're not as hot. What did uh, Fresh and Fit call Melina of Miami for? Yeah. In Miami, maybe Melina's not hot, which is insane because Melina's so beautiful, right? But that's the thing, right? For me, this girl's hot. But for other people, she's not going to be hot. To me, like, I've been in places where I'm just, like, the ugliest girl in the room. And then I've been in other places where I'm, like, the hottest girl in the room just because of aesthetic, right? So when we're having these conversations about where do we fit, where do we, like, where do we belong, it just depends on what bubble you're in, right? Oh, yeah, Raiders Cat, did you see my new bubbles emoji? I made a bubbles emoji. I replaced it from the boomer emoji because I could never get the boomer emoji to be clear. Yeah, see, I think she's really pretty, like, I mean, she's like, what is she? Like a a six, right? She's like hot or not hot, but I think she's very pretty. But like, that's the thing, right? In different bubbles, everyone's going to look different. Everyone's going to have a different relationship with like, what is attractive? What is dateable? What is a good person? What is a bad person? Oh, you know what I mean? <clears throat> oh, gosh. Okay. And then... uh. Mm. This video might be interesting actually to watch as well in terms of dating. Grizz that makes what is it about autistic Grizz that makes everybody fall in love with you? I spent many years wondering this exact same question because the exact same thing would happen to me and I think I have finally reached a conclusion. Nine out of ten times it's a neurotypical person having a crush on an autistic individual that's able to semi mask their autistic traits. Or that person is undiagnosed autistic, as was the case with me. Neurotypical people are raised to form relationships in a more shallow manner, and then it becomes deeper. 
most neurotypical people never reach that depth in relationships unless they have romantic interest in that person. They also have very unclear communication standards and they're just really bad at communicating their wants and needs. So when an autistic person comes along and starts forming a relationship with them at a deeper level, they immediately view that as a sign that it has to be romantic because they've never experienced anything like this in their life that wasn't romantic. Whereas for autistic people, well, it's just another Monday. At least that's my hypothesis. What? I also have this hypothesis. Like Tom asked me the other day, do I have a problem with people getting along with me? Everyone likes me. That's my problem. They don't like me enough to stick around. They always like me, though, because I usually see them in ways no one else does. I usually ask them questions that make them go like, oh, my gosh, no one's ever asked me this before. And I'm like, cool. And then they'll usually, you know, feel like really like, oh, my gosh, like you, you must have something about you. And I'm like, eh. It's really not. It's just like neurodivergency, really. But also introspection. Not all neurodivergents are introspective, but I do think neurodivergents are more more likely to have to be introspective because they have to mask, because they have to have relationships with people in a way that is not natural to them because they're the ones who have to change for society. They have to be aware that there are bubbles. They have to be aware of like, oh, my gosh, you know what I mean? So I think there's something to be said about that. Like, I definitely don't have problems with people being attracted to me. Ask any. That's why I'm always the person in the room that like, why am I invited to this event? Like, why am I here? And I think it's because people initially just don't know what to do with me. And they think I'm like this mystery. I'm just blunt now. Oh, which coincides with this video because I don't think I have autism. We took the test on my discord yesterday for fun. I don't think I really have autism, though. One of my siblings does. I think it's something different. And I think it coincides with my borderline and my neurodivergency in general, the dyslexia, but let me watch, watch this video with me. A stranger correctly identified that I'm autistic. So I was chatting to a new friend at an event. They didn't know anything about me. Um, we were chatting about uh, random things. I mean, they asked me, What's your, what are your thoughts on camping? Like just super random things. Um, and I, oh, well, it depends. I mean, are you like, is it a cow field or is it a campsite? And are there lots of children there? Are there lots of families? Are people like playing music on their phones, all different music, all at the same time, um, whilst there are children screaming and like people shouting at each other? Or is it like really peaceful and you're on your own and you're only people? In the... And after me just monologuing, they said, are you autistic or uh, ADHD? And I was like, yes. And I felt so seen and understood. And they were like, oh, yeah, oh, that's really cool. You know what, that makes sense. Because when you did this thing earlier that I thought, wow, this, you know, Pippa has a lot of confidence to do that. OK, it makes sense because you weren't seeing the, the maybe social rules of like, oh, shouldn't go over there and do that. And it felt amazing. And I've never had a stranger identify me as autistic before. Um, the comments I usually have are, oh, well, you don't look autistic, which is really unpleasant to hear. <laughs> um, because I'm like, mm, what does autism look like to you then? She looks autistic as hell to me. Sorry that I'm not doing autism well enough for you. So to have someone identify it in me and then praise it and go, oh, yeah, here are some cool things I noticed about you. And I see now that those cool things are because you're neurodivergent. It felt amazing. I just wanted to share. Wait, is this not the same video? Wait, did she say it and I missed it? Hold on. Okay, I don't know if she said it and I missed it, but there's either another video or this is the video where she also says, did she say it in this video, guys, and I missed it because I was reading your comments? But basically, um, there was an observation someone made in her life where she had done something socially taboo and they were like oh I thought you were just brave but you're just autistic so you don't even know that it's a taboo I think m one of the things I've been exploring is like am I autistic ADHD or am I just borderline or do I just have like very specific particulars right so what I've been trying to figure out without an, an actual assessment is that the why I do things my partner and I have been brainstorming this and he always asks me like why do you do it so like with borderline it makes sense because you have an issue with identity that you would be aware that you were different because my personality is so dominant. Like my mom says out of the womb, I was like dominant. I was just so aggressive and I was so blunt. Like I would go up to my aunties and be like, so why are you like fat? And I was like four years old. I'd be like, so what's up with that? And then I'd go up to people now. I'm like, what's up with that? 
or like what's what's going on and I the thing I do the reason I do it is one I'm curious but two I do ask myself like am I allowed to say this and then I go eh, like what's the worst that's going to happen they won't be friends with me so or the best that happens they might answer me and then we are friends and we have cool conversations so whatever in my whole life people have always asked me for advice in my whole life even when I was like 13 to 16 years old grown adults would come to me for marriage advice I live it I lived a very strange existence growing up I think and I think a big part of it is just because I I like to read and I know random things and so people are like hey Brittany knows I should ask her and I'm like okay but now I'm much worse at referencing things but that's the question I had to ask myself am I calculated in social situations because I have autism or because I have borderline probably because I have borderline meaning when I'm in social settings like I'll be with youtubers and everyone in the group is like, oh, we all lie to our partners. You don't lie to your partner? And I'm like, no. And they're like, you're the weird one. I have to say, like, am I going to fight and die on this hill? Or should I say, should I say, actually, that you're the weird ones, even though I'm the only one in the group who's actually doing that thing because I'm the minority, but I'm just in a different bubble. And then I have to think, like, is this social suicide by going against all these people and saying, like, yeah, you're all crazy? But also I look crazy because I'm the only one in the group doing it. So of course it looks like I'm the crazy one. But then I have, so I have to think like, should I say this out loud? But if I was in a different bubble, I would say it out loud and everyone would agree with me. It's like the Ariana Grande thing. In some bubbles, they're like, I can't believe someone did this with a pregnant woman. And then other people are like, yeah, who cares? It's cheating. Who cares? It's like, depending on the bubble you're in, right? You're having like a different relationship with what is normal so if you're the odd man out you just always look fucking socially inept that's just like the reality if you're not in the right bubble and you're not saying the right things you always look like why are you saying that like the guy earlier the progressive or the conservative who like tests people to say like oh what group are you in these two people they're trying to see if you're like them right and i think that that's the problem is like i'm going to be strategic about how i socialize to the best of my ability so I don't unnecessarily piss everyone off. But then what that does is it allows people to have a version of me in their heads that's not like completely authentic, which if I'm being completely honest with you is I what I think happened with Destiny is like Destiny formed a version of me in his head that isn't accurate to the full picture of who I am. And so he made a lot of assumptions about me and he never watches my work. So he has no idea how critical I am of everyone who's different from me. And I think that's the problem or like how I think people just, form a version of me in their head and they're like whoa like I didn't expect this of you or I didn't I, I didn't every time someone tells me I didn't expect this of you I just go why did you expect anything of me in the first place what version of me lives in your head rent free because it's probably not accurate because we probably haven't had enough time or enough deep conversations to make sure you understand where I'm coming from like what version of me in your head didn't live up to your expectations and how honest and real is it to the version of me that is more honest, right? And so it's hard. Like, ugh, like I just don't know. But then, you know, it's not my job to at every moment be that socially awkward neurodivergent who goes, hey, I don't like that you do that. It's like, okay, do I need to do that every fucking time I feel that way? Like, do I need to literally say everything that's on my mind at every moment? Because people get mad when I do that. But then when I don't do it, they form versions of me in their head that isn't accurate. And then they're like, Britney's awful. And I'm like, well, why do you think I would, why do you think that of me in the first place? It's just like, I, I run into this. This is the problem I most run into. This is literally the, oops, the problem I run the most into is that I don't always know when I'm supposed to be honest and when I'm just supposed to let people talk and tell me their weird secrets and be like, okay, that's really weird, bro. I, you know, I just never know. And I, I don't, it makes me want, it makes me want to go. <laughs> it just makes me so mad. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um. <sighs> Is there anything else here that I wanted to watch with you guys today? These are all different kinds of subject matters. I don't think so. Oh, this is a good one. This question is for women who date men. If you're a man, get out right now. You're not going to like the question. Um, women who are in happy relationships with men. Do you always have to educate a man? Like, is that a condition for being in a happy heterosexual relationship? I guess I'm asking for like a counterexample. Like, are there any relationships 
between a man and a woman where you don't have to do that because from my own experience and like looking at the couples around me I feel like there's always a component of like teaching men how to treat you or treat your friends or treat women or just like something you're always educating them on something and I also have a dad and a brother so I guess my question is am I am I doomed to work overtime to engage in a happy relationship with a man so I showed this to my partner and of course as you guys know I have the perfect person for me Brittany specifically me not for you for me He's a human. He's normal. But like for me, he's perfect, blah, blah, blah. And I was laughing and I was like, oh, I'm so lucky you're not really a man. And the reason I say that is because he's not he's not not a man. Like he's a straight man. He's just not a man like this kind of man. And a lot of men that I meet are these kinds of men. And they infantilize themselves. Actually, I saw like conservatives will always say like, why are the dads on TV shows so dumb? Have you seen the comedians that fall into this category where they're like, oh, man, I really realized I was a bad dad when I had to take my daughter to the doctors. And he was like, when's her birthday? And I was like, uh, when's your wife's birthday? Uh, what, what foods are you allergic are your kids allergic to? Uh, like men will go up on stage, make fun of themselves for being stupid. And then people are shocked that there's a whole category of men who don't know anything about their kids health their kids allergies, their wife's birthdays. Literally, there's like man on the street stuff you'll see where men are like, um, you know, uh, or interviewers will be like, how much do you know about your girlfriend or your wife? And they'll be like, when's her birthday? What's her favorite color? What's her job? What's her boss's name? And these men won't know the answers. So yes, for every man that is capable, there are men who are these men, the ones you always have to take care of, the ones you always have to treat as big children, the ones you always have to mother. And I don't recommend you date those men. But a lot of people do settle because they don't have the hard conversations. Like, so my partner is the one who showed me that video. He comes into the room and he's like, Brittany. I go, what? He goes, watch this video. And it was a bunch of guys who didn't know anything about their women. Nothing. And he goes, oh my God, men suck. I was like, yeah. And then we laughed about it because he's sitting here like priding himself and being considerate and thoughtful actually paying attention to the details of my life, actually making sure we know each other's birthdays and uh, our favorite foods and, you know, the things we like. So when we're out and about and we're thinking of each other, we can surprise each other with the things that we know that will make our partner happy. Almost like you have to contribute to the relationship to make it better. And it's okay. That thoughtfulness is intentional. It means I'm thinking about my partner while I'm thinking about myself. It means when I'm out and about, I'm not just thinking about what I want. Like he does a lot of the grocery shopping, most of it, 99% of it, and he'll go to the store. And if he never thought about me, then yeah, he would just buy food that he likes and he would come home and be like, oh, I didn't get your favorite snacks or I didn't get the thing I know you like. Like I go through phases of eating the same thing all the time. So for my snacks right now, I'm like consistently eating dry salami and cheese. And basically he's always making sure that the fridge has salami and cheese. And then a few months ago, it was like only tomatoes and soy sauce like I was just eating tomatoes like every day and now I'm just eating salami I'm off tomatoes and I go off and on and if he didn't pay attention he wouldn't be very good at his job which is to maintain the household and make it awesome right like he wouldn't you know what I'm saying it's just again when you're dating you have an opportunity to vet people like the Jewish lady said I wish I knew her name I'm so bad with names from the Netflix show she's right do you need more than six months of actually getting to know somebody to know if they're your person? Maybe if you don't know yourself yet. <clears throat> okay, let's go to your comments. Okay, I'm moving backwards because I missed a lot of these comments. And I would like to read them for you guys. Alex C is here. Hi, Alex. How are you? Alex says, is it true borderline people become obsessive and paranoid when in love? Mm. It is true that people with untreated borderline can have a tendency to over-exaggerate their feelings, have a, a distortion with their feelings, and a miscategorization of other people. It is true that untreated um, people with borderline can have a very hard relationship with codependency, therefore obsession, and therefore be paranoid when in love. It is true that a lot of people with borderline can feel very insecure and unsure of themselves and then create some sort of bad toxic relationship with themselves, which is why you need to go to therapy, which is why you need DBT or something that relates to it. It's why you need to, you know, aim to heal your past wounds and trauma, even if you are not responsible for having the borderline in the first place because it happens to you. It is why um, anytime you're sick, you know, 
it would benefit you and others around you to get that help, no matter what it is. If you're a person who joined the military and got PTSD and you were accidentally beating your wife in your sleep, I know couples who had this problem, because you didn't go to therapy to get your PTSD under control, you might want to do that. So you don't accidentally hurt your partner while they're asleep, right? So yes, untreated, unhelped people often hurt people. Borderline or not, right? Borderline or not. Um, ah, Tiger says, my sister's autistic and I'm not, but we always have the same autistic genes. Or no, we always say I have the same autistic genes because I'm definitely not neurotypical. I mean, honestly, though, right? Wait, Starvo says, what is your good hand asking for research purposes? You mean my dominant hand? My dominant hand is my right hand. Why? What does that mean? Is that like a, is that like a clue for something? Um, is that, is that a clue? Ah, uh, um, the way I, uh, the way that I start conversations with people, I just like it. I just, um, wait, is like, is I just tell them straight up my intentions or our convos quickly turn into philosophy and trauma dumping legit, right? I had to put down such hard boundaries with people because people would feel so safe around me. They would just trauma dump on me, which is why people often mistake how close we are as friends. Cause they'd be like, but I told you my inner thoughts. And I'm like, okay, but did I tell you mine? And they're like, well, no, but I thought you were just taking your time. I was like, I was never going to do it, girl. You did not create a safe space for me to give you my thoughts. You told a stranger you haven't even known for very long all of your inner thoughts without asking me boundaries, without really thinking about what this means. Like I met a girl one time at Starbucks at a, a munch and legit in that moment, she just verbally dumped on me her whole life. And I was like, girl. And I eventually went, ma'am, I don't know you like this. She goes, I know, but you just feel so safe and I want to tell you. And I'm like, cool. But I don't know you like this. You know what I'm saying? I don't know you like this. Um, yes, Alice says there's a bit of overlap with BPD and autism worth researching. That's the problem is like I just want to talk to professionals and I don't want a diagnosis. No offense to everyone. I don't want a self-diagnosis and I do not want a diagnosis from a therapist who's lazy. I want a real diagnosis or not a diagnosis. I do not want to play around with my diagnoses because I will switch my whole fucking life over them. So I'm not about to change up my whole life for somebody who was bored one day and was like, you have autism. Like, no, I either clearly have something that I need to work on or I don't care. And that's the problem with my brain. It's like my borderline diagnosis, my PTSD diagnosis was amazing because it was obviously real and obviously serious. And I got therapy and I got better. So it changed my life for the better. But if I start changing my life around, like the possible lupus diagnosis in which I wasn't even eating gluten and now I'm eating bread every day, like, girl, I don't want to live my life thinking I have something I don't have because I will change my life around it. So I'm very serious about like, I obviously have borderline. I think that's a really accurate like diagnosis, but I'm not about to live with an autism or ADHD diagnosis without it being like a real, real diagnosis because I'm, I will change my life around it. You know what I mean? Um, cause I want to live the best life I can. And I think like having a good relationship with your diagnoses is important. Okay. Um, okay. Blah, blah, blah. Um, ah, Violet says that sounds like how ASD spectrum thinkers think. Some of us are very socially aware. Go on evil autism subreddit. Lots of us use our neurodivergency for positive manipulation or malicious compliance. I think that makes sense. I think it's like a, it feels like a superpower sometimes to be aware or like even to say like, hey, we're in a moment. Or, oh my gosh, this person's really having a moment with me right now. Or to have a realization like, oh, like. This person's um, having like a, like to be aware of someone f bonding with you when you're not bonding with them, or maybe you are bonding with them. It makes me feel crazy sometimes because a part of me is like, oh, this person is choosing to attach themselves to me. What do I do? Like when people ask me, it's kind of weird because when people ask me, like, do you have a hard time getting along with people? It's like, no, people get so upset with me when I don't like them. Like people will literally get bitter at me if I don't like them. So I'm very confused about why I would have the problem of getting along with people, right? Like how would I, I don't have a problem getting along with people. I have a problem uh, getting people to understand that it's okay, that they don't see me as intimately as they would like. And therefore I can't be as vulnerable with them as they would like. 
I think my problem is that people want more from me than I'm ha- like than I'm willing to give in terms of my vulnerability. And I think that's the problem I run into is like, I don't have a problem getting along with people. I think I have a problem with um, being able to say like, hey, like we can't be that close. I'm sorry. Like you can't be that close to me, right? Um, that's why I have an inner circle and inner outer circles. I have to say like, yeah, like it's not going to happen. And even my inner circle, if I feel like they can't see a part of me, they don't get access to it, girl. No, no. Um, discourse says get an examination by a psychologist or psych, psych- wait, psychologist it's, oh, like a real psychologist, not a therapist. Yeah, for sure. I want a diagnosis by a pro pro. Like I'll spend the $2,000. What is it? Like $2,000 or whatever these people charge to get a real autism assessment. I would get a real one. Um, most of my friends got diagnosed by therapists. And I was like, eh, I want to get diagnosed by like a like a serious. Not that therapists aren't serious. That sounds bad. But you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, my allergies. Woo! Okay, do you guys want to watch this weird? Here, let's watch this weird video while I blow my nose. Hold on. I know you're getting paid, but that feels so demoralizing. They've turned you into furniture. Oh my goodness. Bro, when I saw this with my partner, we were both like, oh my God, I want to hurt them. Like, how could they treat somebody like this? And I was like, but the, but let me tell you, if this is BDSM, I'm all about it. The reason I like non-paid BDSM is because you're really consenting to be there in the moment, right? If If you're getting paid, I feel really uncomfortable with it. And if you're, but if you're a sex worker, it's different because you like, you're doing it, but this is a restaurant and there are kids in the background and there's something really creepy rich to me about this. We're like rich people be crazy trying to like objectify people. Right. And so there's something about it that I'm just like, I don't like this at all. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it looks. I don't, if this was a BDSM scene again, I'm fine. If this was like sex work, I'm fine. But working at a restaurant and having people, normal people normal quotation marks be like oh yes i would love to use the human as furniture and i'm like why 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 are you being weird it feels so off it feels so weird to me right uh discourse says just wondering why you would seek an autism diagnosis at this point in your life well mm, what do you mean by that question are you insinuating that i'm at a point in my life where i should just stop getting to know myself because for me, it's about getting to know myself. I want to know every detail of how my brain works, what kind of uh, genetics are impacting my life, what like what kind, how does my brain work? Like you guys know I'm literally obsessed with introspection. What is introspection? It never ends. It's a relationship with your consciousness. It's an understanding of yourself in relation to others, extrospection. It's a relationship with like I want to know every single thing about myself. I do not want to be 70 years old and realize like holy shit. Because if I didn't get diagnosed with borderline, my life would have been awful. My life would have been a continuous mess of suicide attempts and just like a mess, right? The fact that I got a diagnosis made me stop wanting to unalive myself. I haven't, I haven't wanted to kill myself in literally four years because I got a diagnosis and I got therapy. I wanted to die since I was nine years old. Nine. Why do I want a diagnosis if I have something? So I don't have to suffer unnecessarily. It is suffering to not know myself. Does that make sense? Okay. Oh, I, this TikTok pisses me off. Okay, let's go back to your comments. <clears throat> okay, hold on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bum. Oh, I feel like I'm missing really good comments from you guys. Hold on. Oh, I feel like I'm missing great comments. Okay, hold on. I got to scroll up, girls. I'm not missing this. Okay, I'm at this point. I'm at this point. Okay, I've read this. Mm. Heather says, desperately praying for the Destiny Britney bridge, but I don't know why Steven got so triggered but tolerated Sneeko being weird shit for months after because my theory, well, 
I think I think Stephen probably knows why, but he might not be aware of it. I just think, yeah, I in order, I think in order for him to be honest about why he got upset, he would have to admit to things that he that he's had a really good cognitive dissonance with for many years. Like he can't make me into an enemy. It won't work. You can't treat me like you treat Sneeko. Sneeko thrives off the sensationalism. He doesn't want to have a real conversation. Sneeko's great. I love Sneeko. Like, I have no problem with Sneeko's brand and getting money and, like, playing in that bubble. But, like, Sneeko is there to make content. And Steven can't treat me that way. That's why when we had the bridge burning, I never used him in a thumbnail. I never used him in my titles, even though he used me in those things because I was trying to convey to him as a friend, I am not trying to use you for views. I am trying to make it clear that I'm not sure what's going on. And I don't mean to be such an autist, but like something's going on. And my instinct tells me what it is. And I just don't think he understands how inappropriate it was to do what he did to me because I'm not a content mill. The reason he does it with Sneeko is because Sneeko and him have a relationship where they're content mills. That's how they have a friendship. Do you know what I mean? That's why I think it would be really hard for him to admit like, if you want a real relationship with me, that's friendship. We can't talk on the internet. We have to talk in private. If you want to use me for content and you want me to use that way, you use that way, then you can't, you especially can't be mad at me for talking about your life on the internet, right? Because that's what Stephen was mad at. He was mad at me for talking about his life that was public on the internet, right? And he thought I was not seeing him clearly, but like everyone does that. So why am I different? And it, he just wasn't clear about what he wanted from me. Do you want to put down boundaries or do you want to use me as content like Sneeko? Because you can't treat me both ways and then be like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I try to make it clear with my friends. I would, I'd love to be friends with you. But if your shit's on the internet, I'm going to talk about it. If it's public, I'm going to talk about it. I make that clear with everybody. If it's on the internet, I'm going to talk about it because that's my job. And that's my boundary. That's what I put down in the sand for myself. But if my friends would like to request specifically that I act a little differently, I'll consider it maybe. Because it depends on what kind of friendship we're going to have, right? What if I had a friend who was a YouTuber who was like, never talk about me ever? That sounds manipulative as hell to me, right? So it's just like, what does that mean, right? Um, Discord says, I understand wanting to know yourself completely. Does it feel like suffering to have unanswered questions about yourself? You say your life is great now, so I'm wondering where the suffering is. Well, life is all suffering. You never stop suffering. You suffer through joy. Joy was the goal, which I accomplished, that does not eradicate suffering. That's why I'm saying fives are not, like, they're not magic. They still suffer. I'm still sick. I still have fibro. Like, am I not supposed to suffer if my leg is cut because I found joy? You can find joy and still suffer. Life is suffering by default. Great question. But life is suffering by default. My life is great. My life will be great if I get cancer. My life will be great if I get my leg cut off. My life will be great because I found my joy. That doesn't mean I won't suffer. It doesn't mean I won't feel pain. It doesn't mean I won't get anxious. It won't mean when I, you know, it doesn't mean that I won't feel depression. It doesn't mean that I won't feel like I'm at a loss. It won't, it doesn't mean I'll stop being human. You know what I mean? The relationship you're having with that suffering changes though. It becomes less consuming. It becomes a thing that's more of a mystery, like an itch you have in your brain versus like an all-encompassing, like, I need to kill myself now because I'm suffering. Does that make sense? <sighs> okay, let's see. Um, reading chat. Um, Alex says, give me your top five bubble hoppers, Brittany. I don't know what that means. Like people who bubble hop, in my opinion. I don't know what that means. Uh, you have to treat any partner how to, tr you have to teach any partner how to treat you. You have to treat any partner how to treat you. Do you mean teach your partners how to treat you? I'm sorry, I'm reading comments and I'm not sure. Um... Okay, I'm on the part of the chat where you guys are talking about educating your partners. Love that. I'm just trying to like catch up. Ooh, dry salami is so good though. I live for it, guys. I live for it. 
I'd rather be single than live with a man I have to parent. Some people like it. You do you. But like, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, no, thank you. I think if you think paying for your partner's rent is parenting them, like we need to have different discussions, right? Like my brother doesn't think like paying for his the rent or the mortgage is like because because again, if you're going to tell your wife not to work or your girlfriend not to work and she has to stay at home, then of course you have to pay the rent. Who else is going to do it, dummy? Like that's why men can't use that against their women. Like I pay the rent. So it's like, yeah, but you wanted me to stay home. So it's like, bro. Ah, Slay says my theory is that the world is more neurodivergent than typical. Honestly, though. You know what made me think that too, Slay, was when that time, uh, time, uh, time, why can't I remember how you say it? Time blindness girl, when that time blindness girl wanted an accommodation and all these people were like, um, that's just called being on time. We all have to suffer with being on time. And I was like, are we all suffering with being on time? Does that mean we're all neurotypical? Or like when women go, um, we've all had crushes on our girlfriends. That doesn't mean we're gay. And I'm like. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? You know what I mean? Like, what does that mean? That makes me go, mm, what are you talking about? What does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, what does that mean? That's interesting. Like, you know how people are like, oh, people are getting more diagnosed with these things. I'm like, they could be, or we could just be more aware of it now. So they're allowed to be diagnosed. Or maybe people are being misdiagnosed. That's why a misdiagnosis is so hard. I don't want a misdiagnosis. But then we have to be open to the real ones. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people aren't open to real diagnoses. Diagnoses. Diagnosi. Bum, 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 bum. Agent Butterfly says, being borderline, how do you find your sense of self? Um, well, obviously, I think philosophy is the key, right? And introspection is the key to that. And no matter who you are, what your aim is with the introspection, you have to have a relationship with yourself. You have to have a moment with yourself and you have to be honest about the things that are ugly about you and the things that are beautiful about you and the things that are honest and they just you have to be so you have to have such a specific relationship with yourself you have to literally admit to yourself like oh my gosh there are parts of me that I need to radically change or there's a version of me I want to get to but I can't seem to reach her what's blocking you probably yourself you know and it might be environment like it might be but I think you have to have that relationship. Look, everything that is suffering is a tool. So I noticed that with myself, as an example, I always feel joyful, but I don't always feel comfortable because those are different things. Joy has to do with my relationship with my consciousness, which I understood better after my diagnosis with borderline because that's kind of what was missing in my life was like an understanding of my mental health, right? And then, um, hold on, I lost my train of thought already relationship with my consciousness. Oh, and then I learned that I can be uncomfortable but not lose my joy. So I can feel like I'm out of my skin. I can feel like I'm out of my body. I can feel like, oh, I don't like this environment. Oh, I don't like the way this floor is. I don't like, like, I hate the flooring in this apartment we're in. It makes me feel weird. I don't like it. I don't like certain textures or atmospheres. I don't like certain, even like paint on the wall bothers me. So like, that sounds so neuro neurodivergent, but like, you know what I mean? I'm very aware that if I'm in a hotel room that is in my home, I hate it. If I'm visiting friends, I hate being gone from my house for more than four days. If I'm, that's why I hate vacationing. I literally hate going on a vacation because it just means I'm not sleeping in my own bed. What is the perk of this? Like, I like it as a concept. I, I like it, but I have to literally tell myself, just make it through the week. You'll be home because I hate going to bed in a bed that isn't mine. So for me, I would argue that you get to know yourself by being honest with the things that make you uncomfortable, being honest with the things that make you miserable, being honest with the things that make you lose your joy or find your joy. You know what I mean? Like it's, there's so many layers to knowing yourself, including what foods you're into and why you are or are not into them. Like I don't know how many times you guys have heard my banana stories, but I don't like bananas. I don't like the smell. I don't like the texture. I don't like the way they look. I don't like anything about them. And I try every so many years to try a banana. I try it in different ways. I hate it every time. But I ask myself, like, why do I have a problem with bananas? Obviously, I gave pretty good answers. The smell, the texture, and the aesthetic just, like, gross me out. When I touch a banana, my whole skin crawls. It's just, like, the most disgusting thing ever. And I'm like, well, why would I eat this then if it's that gross to me? 
But then some people are like, I don't get it. How could you hate bananas? And I'm like, yeah, that's a great question. Why do I hate bananas? And honestly, I think I really did get it down to smell, texture, aesthetic, like everything about the experience I'm having with it is bad. So the experience has never been good. And I, again, I'll try it every few years. I always try, I've tried frozen bananas, chocolate bananas. I've tried cooked bananas. I've tried plantains. I've tried like so many variations of like banana adjacent foods. And I'm like, mm -mm. I've tried flav fake flavored banana candy. I've tried popsicles. I've tried, it just, I hate it all. And that's the thing. That's how I gain the tools to be more introspective about myself is I put myself to the test. I test myself. And that's what dating sometimes is. And that's what uh, being in politics sometimes is, is, right? You test yourself to know yourself. You know, for some of us, like me, I really have to live an experience. Like my farm brother who got married in his early 20s always said, like, why do you think you had to test things? Like, why do you think you have to test things out? And I was like, oh, because as much as I think I learn from other people, and I do to an extent, I'm really like a, but is it different for me? Other people are really bad at their life, but what if I'm good at it? You know, other people are really bad with open relationships, but what if I'm better at it? Um, other people are really bad with this, but like, what if I'm kind of good at it? I want to test myself. Um, oh, Bree says, I like your earrings, girl. Thank you so much. Hold on. This is the purple side. These are floral earrings by um, uh, Mia, designs by Mia. Mia, what's your name? Mia, 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 Mia. Mia. She's on my Instagram. Her name is Mia. She's amazing. She literally makes the best jewelry. I've bought like so many of her earrings. I love her stuff. She's on my Instagram. Follow her. Um, Discord said sounds like autism sensory issues. Well, that's the thing is my partner sometimes thinks I do have. He thinks I might have a sprinkle of autism, OCD, and ADHD, but not enough to diagnose anything. But he thinks I have like a sprinkle because of the way that I was like I came up and maybe a combination of trauma because I do have certain habits. Like I definitely unmask totally at home. And so he sees like so many of my weird habits where he's like, oh, mm, interesting. And I'm like, don't hate me. I love you. Don't like, don't leave me. Like I know. And all my borderline insecurity comes up because I'm like, is this okay? Is this okay? Is this okay? And a lot of it is just like, oh my God. and it's true. Like I've never done that with somebody before where I completely unmasked. And I just still like, I put all my vulnerabilities in a little box and I handed it to him and I was like, here you go. And he's like slowly going like this. He's like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? So yeah, like a lot of my habits is like I'm constantly like doing certain things or tapping my foot or like sit, the noises I have to make or like this. I'm But this I learned in borderline therapy, like tapping and creating like a rhythm. And then sometimes it's a little bit like I have to do it till it feels good or makes sense. Like just like, a, yeah. <laughs> this course says just a sprinkle of autism, just like a a sprinkle yeah it feels like I have a sprinkle and I'm just like neurodivergent and that's it like that's just like probably what it is but I don't know that I the problem is like I don't I don't know it's hard to say okay here's an example tell me this here's here's I brought this up to my partner you guys tell me this is it autism arrogance ego or just playing the game well when I read a study that says women don't ask for raises and I go, oh, okay. Walks into the office. Hey, I'd like a raise. Okay, here's your raise. Fucking sweet, bro. Um, women don't ask men out. Oh, okay. Slides into my husband's DMs. Hey, I like you. Do you want to hang out with me? Mary's husband. Oh, okay. Dope. Um, women don't make a lot of eye contact with men, which signals to the men they're not interested and or they're, they're possible good victims for assault because men traditionally, the predators will go for women who don't make eye contact with them because it signals to them that one, you're oblivious, two, you won't recognize their face. So I make aggressive eye contact with everyone I see. And that usually makes people go, huh, you're weird. Why are you looking at me straight in the eye? And I'm like, I don't know, why, why not? Right? In life, when I read something and it says, oh, typically people don't do this and it seems to be bad for them, I just do the opposite. And it usually works for me. What is that? I just think it's playing the game of chess more efficiently, but some people feel like, oh, that's like your autism or that's your neurodivergency or that's your borderline. But again, it feels like that's just me being better at chess, but I'm not sure. Like if I read a study and it says like, oh, this is better. And I go, okay, then I'm going to do the thing. You know what I mean? When I got diagnosed with some borderline, it was like, hey, like there's a therapy you can take and there's like books you can read and there's like things you can do to get better. Okay, so I just did them. 
And my bo- my therapist was like, Brittany, most people don't even do these things. I was like, why? You just gave me the answer. Why wouldn't I just do them? And she's like, well, it's hard. I was like, yeah, of course it's hard. I wanted to kill myself like 20 times. But like it was either that or die. And if I don't have to die, like why wouldn't I do it? So my brain just does this thing, probably because of borderline, where it's just like very black and white or as Discord says, very literal, where it's like, oh, okay, I'll just do that. If that's the answer, I'll do that. Now, if only I could transfer this to money. If only I could save money with this literal brain of mine. Like if only I told myself if I save $10 a day, I would have this much at the end of the month. If only I could do that. I can't do that though. (laughs) I can't do that. That's the one thing I can't do. I remember when I was like, I don't know if you guys are new to my audience and you don't know this story, but when I was like losing my virginity, I legit just, um, I was working at a grocery store and I announced it to everyone I was working with who I was friends with. So like, I don't know, 30 people. And I was like, hey, I'm going to have sex with somebody, a man, because like I've, you know, I've done stuff with girls and like that's a different path. But I want to have sex with a guy uh, who wants to possibly have sex with me. And like 20 people volunteered. And I was like, okay, cool. I pick that one. And then I had sex for the first time. Everyone thought that was crazy. But I was like, well, the goal is to have sex. I need someone who's consenting. I need someone that's in a group of people I like. And I need them to be okay with my boundaries. So, yeah. And then, bam, I had sex. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if I want something to get done, I just go, okay, that's what I want. How do I get that thing? That, But I'm only, here's the conundrum. I only work off goals. If I have no goals, I will not only be lazy, but I will not do anything. I will sleep all day. If I have no ambitions, no goals, no motivation, no inspiration, if I have nothing, I won't do it. I won't do it. You know what I mean? Discourse says you're ambitious. Maybe. Maybe that's what the answer is. None of above. You're just bubbly bubbly, and, and don't accept limits. Basically, you're a brat. Why can't I? Maybe, actually. I mean, maybe. Damn. Um, I see you guys have asked me a few questions about the introspecti- introspection level of my partner. I feel uncomfortable answering that for him because that's kind of like his privacy. But obviously, I wouldn't date somebody that I didn't think was introspective, right? Like, that is a key point. But I'm not going to level my partner on the internet. But great question. Alex C says, I wonder how you would end up like if you didn't read, if you didn't like to read books. Probably a mess. I probably would have died. I think my book obsession helped me so much. I 100% contribute so much so much of my success in life to me reading books. I just think I, I I bubble hopped. I figured out so much of my life through books. If I wasn't reading and reading and reading, I just, if I wasn't watching anime and reading, if I wasn't watching stories, if I wasn't obsessed with interpersonal relationships, if I wasn't reading the newspaper or reading like um, self-help books or articles, like if I wasn't just consuming and consuming and consuming, I think, but keep in mind, I was always consuming to be introspective because my family was raised that way. Like my family would sit around the table and say, here's a news article. What do you all think? And if if you were five years old or if you were 50 years old, you could answer. So keep in mind, my parents allowed their children to answer these questions. Like literally a five-year-old in the family would be like, hey, what do you think about this? And they'd be like, hmm, well, I think this super cute, right? But it's like, you know, here, look at this video on my nose. And why do I exist? Oh my God, that's, and who may- wait, that's so loud. Okay, here's a video. I'm so sorry for earphone users. Here's a video. Who am I? It says, my brain, the second I see giant mountains. And why do I exist? And who made me? And what am I expected to do with my life? <laughs> who am I? And why do I exist? And who made me? I'm so sorry if that was really loud. I didn't expect it to be so loud in my ear. Oh, that video cracks me up. Every time I'm in nature, I'm just like, who am I? What am I doing with my life? It's just like, you know what I mean? I would put myself in situations that would continue that conversation, right? Um, okay. Hold on, I'm gonna scroll up because I feel like I'm missing good comments. Um Maddox says, if I had the 400 euros, I would do the autistic assessment, though. It's only 400. In the U.S., it's like two to $3,000. In the, it, wait, in Europe, is it only 400 euros? Can I do it in Europe? I don't know if I could do that. Ah, Discord says, would you call reading a special interest? I lost it, though. Guys, I can't read a book. Any, I read over 2,000 books. Easy. No, I would read 
My mom has literally pictures of me from when I was a child winning reading competitions at libraries to when I was in my 20s working three jobs, only getting four hours of sleep. And every time I was awake and at home or even in between my jobs, I'd be reading a book. At work, I would always have a book on me. When I worked at In-N-Out, when I worked at the vet, when I worked any job, everyone knew me as the girl who reads books every day, like hundred, just like books every day. I could read a book a day easy from fiction to nonfiction. I would just do, 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 do. I was just consuming everything, just like total consumption. And then I started watching anime again and socializing more and getting on the internet more and being more religiously like into the internet. And I have a hard time reading a book now. I have a hard time feeling like I have time to read. And I wonder what happened. And I think a big part of it was that I became a content creator. Weirdly enough, I feel like my job consumes all of my brain and reading feels so for pleasure to me that I think I feel almost bad doing it or like when could I do it and even if I want to turn it into work um for some reason it doesn't feel as satisfying maybe because people aren't reading like book t book youtubers are not that's not my direction right reading a book for work is not as helpful but um yeah maybe I'm just too busy now I don't know but that used to be my life and now it's just like uh m social media my job like that's why my partner says I do all day is just like job stuff. I'm always listening to like lectures or watching YouTube or taking points, like taking TikToks down and being like, okay, I'll talk about this at work. So maybe it's that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I definitely contribute so much of my life to my book reading habits. Oh, oh, yeah. It's true. Know thyself, exactly. Mm. Discord says so, kind of sounds like ADHD. I literally fall asleep if I don't work a minimum of 60 hours a week and constantly stressed. But honestly, I never saw anything to tell me that this isn't your personality. It's too consistent across the board to simply put it put it into your BPD, ADHD, or autism. Sounds weird, but I think this is you and not any condition. Maybe. Um, I had a separate... I had to separate ADHD, my personality, my habits as a result of my ADHD, my own habits without ADHD. When I hear everything about you, I don't know. It tells me this is just your personality. Why not? Yeah, honestly, like very possibly. I Maybe when I was in homeschooling, I'll give you another example. I think it's just who I am. I just think I'm funny. Okay, so when I was in homeschooling, my mom would put me in squirts. Squirts? 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 You know, it's like a short and a skirt mixed together. Squirts? Squirts? What's it called? A squirt? And... When I was in homeschooling, I would like go up to families and be like, do you want to see my underwear? And then I would flash them my shorts and you should have seen the fear in the parents' faces. And I just thought that was the funniest thing. I think I might just be a sadist. I just thought it was the funniest thing as like literally an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, 10-year-old. I just thought it was so funny to like prank parents who were like, oh, the social faux pas. Like, I think I just take rules and I'm such a rebel that I'm like, I'm just going to not do that. Which is why I hate the constructs and I hate all the rules because the rules are so arbitrary. Why do we create the rules? I don't know, cuz. And I'm like, I'm gonna fucking die, okay? So yeah, maybe it's just my personality, bros. And I'm good with that answer. You know what I mean? Let me put my lips on because God didn't give me any. It's true. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Situate my pants. Okay. But yeah, I think it's just, it could just very much be my personality type, honestly. Which is why I do feel like I get along with, you know, so many people. <laughs> Discord says, you're just a brat, bro. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Honestly. <clears throat> yeah, I think I just kind of do what I want. And everyone's like, why do you do that? Like, look, unless the government's going to come kill me, I just kind of want to do what I want. You know what I mean? Unless I'm going to get imprisoned. Like, I just kind of want to do what I want. Like, I just want to do what I want to do you know that's why I learned the local laws and I just kind of pay attention to what I'm willing to deal with uh, it's true whoa president-elect says at 70 you probably won't even know your grandkids names why my grandpa was like active at 103 bro he was active. My grandparents were active in their 80s. They were very, I had great conversations with my grandparents. 
They were very active people. We stayed good for a long time. Except one of my grandparents, she had Alzheimer's, my grandma. R.I.P. It's true. Okay, hold on, I'm scrolling down. <clears throat> ah, do you not think that streaming is signing up for a career as a content mill? Wait, what do you mean? Tell me, I don't know. Maybe? I don't know. Do you not think that streaming is signing up for a career as a content mill? Oh, like I'm the content? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to catch up on this chat now. I'm so sorry if I skip a lot of comments. Just re-ask them if I've skipped all the way down. Alice says, autism is a disability, so you have to consider... If it is a severe enough to disable you, you could definitely just be a personality type. For sure. I, yeah. Is borderline a disability? I mean, I think like, un... yeah, I think it can be. Is everything a disability if it makes your life harder? Like, what is, you know what I mean? That's a great question to ask. I think myself is like, what does it mean to even identify somebody? Like, is my fibro a disability? You know what I mean? It's an interesting question to ask. Destiny says, do you think if you were born 10 years or even five years later, you'd have a diff you'd be different or is still the same? I mean, I think everything matters. Like where you are in a moment of time, the tools you have accessible to yourself. Um, I think if I was born a minute later, I think if I if anything changed, right? I mean, God, if the doctor dropped me when I was being born, I, everything would have changed. I think everything is perfect the way it is because everything is exactly the way it has to be. And then when you start to have a relationship with free will and I think pop bubbles, you start to figure out what can you do alone as a consciousness and then what can you do to defy the determinism or the nature that you were born into, right? How much of what is determined can you defy? And I think quite a lot. You know what I mean? Alice says that's a meta conversation depending on the bubble you are in. It can determine how disabled you are. True. True. Okay, now let me do this. It's true. Let me do this. Okay, I'm going to tinkle. I will be right back. And then we're going to watch other things together. Okay, I'll be right back. Leave questions if you want me to tackle anything when I get back. Two seconds.
I'm here. Okay. <gasps> Hi, sweet girl. Hi, sweet girl. Hi, the mouse. Hi, the sweetest girl in the whole world. Oh, hi, my mouse. <gasps> hi. Chance with the great quotes. Thank you. Nation says, Brittany, you're getting stuck on this point. I've hum mainly disagree with free will. I'm starting to fall more into the determinist, determinist camp. What are your thoughts? Um, Yeah, I think it's both. I think all things are true to an extent, right? Everyone's having a relationship with something. I think things, some things are determined, and I think some things are not. Shadow Bee says, that was quick. Did you wash your hands? Not only did I wash out my hands, I went to the kitchen, looked for snacks, talked to my partner, kissed him, and came back. How long do you think does it take you all to do things? I am a very fast peer, though. I am a very fast peer. It was like 15 seconds to pee. Um, okay. Um... Yeah, I think it's both. I think some things are determined and then some things you can override with free will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you find out what wisdom is? No, wisdom is a lifelong journey, I think. To be wise in the way that I see it, I don't think that, I think it's earned over a very long time. I'll probably die before I become wise. I'll probably die. Okay. Do you believe in fate? Mm. No. I don't. Um, you know what I mean? Okay. Shadow B says, so how long you wash your hands? Let me, this is my technique for washing my hands. Are you guys the same? This is what I do. Hold on. I go squirt, squirt. I have like a, I have a, a ritual and then I do this and then I kind of, and then I wash it. I wash it all off and then I do it again and then I soap again and I go. And then I do it again. And then if it doesn't feel right, I do it a third time. <laughs> but if it feels right, then I just do it that many times and I dry my hands. Sometimes I'll dry my hands and be like, nope, that still didn't feel right. And then I'll wash them again. So, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's go to... <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I think I'm going to do these two videos, and then I'm going to call it good. Maybe. Um, you're an Aussie mate. My apologies for ever doubting you. I'm sorry. <laughs> the OCD. Stop. That's why my partner thinks I might have OCD too. No, listen. I, I do what it feels. Everything is like what feels good. Even like literally, um, I just feel like I go off intuition and what feels good with everything. Stop it, Bryson. Bryson's like autism. <laughs> stop it. I think it's just like, look, okay. It's what feels right. If it feels right, it's good. Same with dating, same with everything else. Like the logic, yes, but also does it feel right? And then the logic, okay? Um, thoughts on online dating? Um, see, now my hands feel weird because I feel like I took all the moisture out of them by doing that. And now I feel like I need aquaphor in my hands, but it's too far away and I'm not going to get up again. Um, thoughts on online dating? Works for some people, doesn't work for others, right? Just matters why you're there and how you're using it. So this video, I'm excited to watch with you guys. I think you will be too. It's true. I got to move over a little bit. So, <clears throat> okay, can you guys see it? Are we so excited for this? This is Neurodivergent People Speed Date on the Button Part 2. Remember how we saw Part 1? And it was like really fabulous. And I thought, okay, let's watch Part 2, bros. Um, okay, so... Ah, <sighs> tell me how their volume is, um, but I'm very excited to watch this with you guys. So from one neurodivergent to the rest of you, dating can be difficult, but you absolutely can do it. And I love that I fell in love with a neurodivergent and I just think we're so compatible, not because we're neurodivergent, but it 
damn, it helps to get somebody who understands you. Do you like being slapped? Oh. No, I am in my soft era. <laughs> Welcome to The Button, a speed dating show. Okay, when the button ma'am, like that started off like my type of dating. So what do we think about being slapped? <laughs> being slapped. No, I am in my soft era. <laughs> Welcome to The Button, a speed dating show. When the Let's button go. lights up red, either player may press it and swap out their date for a new person. Get out of here. If two people can last on a date for 10 minutes, they win an all expenses paid second date. Today's episode of The Button is focused on folks who are neurodivergent and on the spectrum. Hi. Interesting that they specify, isn't on the spectrum neurodivergent? Wait, is neurodivergent not the umbrella term for everyone who's neurodivergent, like people with autism? That's interesting. Shadow Beast says so many people seem ashamed of watching Cut and feel the need to always point out how scandalous their videos are. I openly love that shit. Really? I will tell you this. I always get demonetized. Cut takes the revenue. So if you guys want to like the stream, I would appreciate it. But if I make this into a clip, they demonetize my videos. So that's the only problem of doing Jubilee and Cut videos is they 100% demonetize your video and take the revenue. So if you guys want to support the channel, just like the stream. That would do like loads for YouTube's algorithm. Lily. How's it going? Good. I'm Leo. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. If you could be a piece of furniture, what, do you, what would you be? I feel like I'd like to be a lamp. A just lamp. kind of put me in a corner. A lamp. Just illuminate the space, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. How about you? What I feel like I'd be? be a bed. A bed? Yeah. Why? They're just so comfy and I feel like, True. I don't know. I wouldn't be a bed. I'd be one of those, mm, but see, I don't want just anyone laying on me. I feel like I would want a big fat pillow, like the one of those really big pillows that are like, you know what I mean? They're like cuddle pile pillows, but I wouldn't want just anyone to lay on me. And that's my problem. But then if it was the right person, I would want to just like snuggle and sn you know what I'm saying? But th I think, I think a lamp would be a good one, right? You could brighten people's day. Neurodivergent also includes schizophrenia too, but no one talks about that. Yeah, for sure. I definitely consider, well, like personality disorders is neurodivergency. Anything that changes literally like processing to an extent is like neurodivergent brain, um, uh, brain, what's this called? Uh, brain, ter uh, Kyla talks about this, not so erudite, how she has a brain injury and that's considered technically neurodivergent. Oh, it's my chill spot. Fun fact about Leo, they love Justin Bieber. I love do Justin you? Bieber. Do you like okay. Justin Bieber? I do like him like a little bit. I like his old stuff. You like to be I, like, more I, than prefer, like the I prefer stuff. his old stuff, yeah. yeah. I also like the Christmas songs. How to be honest with you, I never thought I would do this, but I actually like the Justin Bieber album with the cringe, like Martin Luther King Jr. quote in it, but not that part. I just like the later songs in that album are really good. I don't know what it's called, but I've listened to it like so many times, like maybe a thousand times I've listened to that album. I don't even know. Um, but I like that album. I don't know what it's called. And that's the only Justin Bieber album I've ever listened to, but I like Old it. How old am I? I'm 20. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I'm 25. How you? 25? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I like older women, not gonna lie. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> nice. So Lillian, in order to date Leo, you have to be willing to try new things in bed. Oh, honey, I'm a freak. So you're not gonna worry okay, about that's that. that's perfect. <laughs> you, you and I feel like neurodivergent people are a freak. Actually, I had to ask myself that question. You want to talk about being extrospective, introspective. Like... BDSMers, I love BDSM, but do weirdos like BDSM? D and D. Do not weirdos like D and D? And it's like, what's a weirdo? A weirdo could be anything from neurodivergent to into weird things. Weird. What is weird? Weird could be not the majority, or it could be genuinely like an unnerving thing that you're into, i.e., weird. And I had to ask myself, like. Is everyone, because like literally guys, I used to have the thought, oh, this is so cringe. I used to literally be in the BDSM dungeon and be like, of course everyone here is neurodivergent. It's weird being around all these neurodivergent people. Um, I'm so different. Wow, I can't believe I'm the only one not like really neurodivergent in this group. That was before I was diagnosed with borderline and PTSD. And now I'm like, duh, oh my God, duh. <laughs> I gotta worry about that. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Oh I've my dated god. A lot of people and they're We're just, just vanilla. so vanilla. They're so That's vanilla. Boring. Yeah. I feel like it's okay to start off as vanilla. <sighs> <laughs> I'm too shy. I, you're I'm, too. You're I'm, too, I'm too, too young. I'm too young. You're too young for me. I'm probably more experienced than you. <laughs> oh, honey, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I love your bees. 
Thank you. It's very cute. Thank you. I have a little bee tattoo. Ooh. Right here. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. What's your name? Lily. What's uh, yours? Emu. Is that your chosen name? Yes. I love it. Is it based off of the bird? Of course. <laughs> awesome. But I spell it the Spanish way and put an accent on the U. The accent just makes it Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Love that. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you're so mean. We love a delusional hoe. I'm dead. Like, literally, though. It's true. I was so convinced, guys. I was so convinced that I was like, wow, all these people are so neurodivergent. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and dyslexia. I never thought dyslexia was neurodivergency. I never knew that. And so I was like, what's the big deal? I just never thought about it. I literally... That's what I'm saying, guys. I am very concerned. Here's a, here's here's my fear. Are you ready? What if I've just been masking so well? Because, like, I get really paranoid about, like, taking tests. Or I remember when people will ask me, I'm such a, like, a protector of my feelings that in order for me to be, like, completely honest, I really have to feel very safe with people. Like, I'll be honest on a surface level. So if somebody's like, hey, are you uncomfortable? I'd be like, yeah, I'm uncomfortable, but it's fine. But if I was more honest because I felt safe, I might even say, like, Hey, I'm actually like so I'm fucking uncomfortable right now and I don't want to shield it and I need someone else to be like in charge, but I will usually just like pretend I'm not as impacted. That's why I appreciated ABBA being so comforting on our cab ride because like I had gotten uh, I had something had happened and I needed to get back to my Airbnb. And so I was already on edge and I just like didn't feel a need to mask very much around him like he. Like, I didn't need to act differently. I needed, I didn't need to hide my feelings. I didn't need to hide my anxiety. Like, Abba was really accepting. And so he had curated a safe space enough for me to be like, oh, my God, I'm freaking out. Or, like, my partner curates a consistent safe space. And that's why I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I really feel good with you. I feel like I can tell you everything. That's why I don't feel a need to lie to my partner. He never gives me a reason to. He never needs me to. His fear, anxiety, issues never make it my problem. So I have to lie. I never have to lie to this man. I never have to pretend I don't feel hurt. I never have to say like, oh, like, I don't know if I liked that. Like, I can just say like, hmm, I'm not sure that I liked that. In the same way you would eat a food and not really like it, I can just be like, I'm not sure if I liked that. That's that's how it feels. Like, I want to be as free as I am with food. Like, I want to be able to eat food and be like, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Today when I was getting ready, my hair was up at one point and he saw me and he goes, oh, um. Hmm. And I was like, um, what? And he's like, um, hmm. I don't know. You look weird. I was like, you look weird. And he was like, you look weird. I was like, hmm, do I look weird? And he was like, something's off. And I was like, really? And he goes, maybe it's the pants. Maybe it's this. Maybe. And I was like, no, I just like this all the time. And then we were like looking at each other. And then I put my hair down and actually styled it. And he was like, oh, it was just your hair. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. The outfit came together. The outfit came together once. You know what I mean? Once I put it all together, um, Alex C says not even white lies. What's a white lie? Because no, like a white lie might be that my partner saw me earlier today and went like, you look great no matter what. But he doesn't do that. He's like, hey, I love you. You're always sexy to me. But like, mm, not really pulling off the look. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you, Meryl Streep and the Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, why white lie? Like, what's the benefit? Now, Again, I do play a word game with people because Laurel K. Hamilton created the Mary Gentry series. And the rule of the Fae is you can't lie. But you can be so good with words that people misunderstand you to the point where it kind of is a lie, but it's not technically a lie. I do play those games. So I will play those games, but I won't del like I won't actually lie lie. And some people think I do lie because I play those games. But I just want to be very good with language. And I will I will admit that I grew up reading Mary Gentry. It's my one of my favorite series. I'm obsessed. You should definitely read it, especially if you like like really sadistic, BDSM, -y, fairy, magic, sex books. But um I do like to be good at chess and not literal chess, but you know what I mean? So again, I lying is such a spectrum, but again, my partner and I consent, so we talk about it. Like he is so honest that he might even consider the way I speak to people a version of lying. But with each other, I don't talk to him like I talk to everyone else. Like people aren't owed my life. I'll give an example of the way that I like to quote unquote lie that I don't consider a lie, but some people might. Um, people would ask me, where do you where are you located? 
and I lived in Arizona at the time and I didn't want people to know where I lived because I was still getting over the fear of my stalker. Um, God bless her. We hope she gets her mental health figured out. And I would say, oh, you know, I have to drive states away to see my parents. Oh, my parents are 30 states away from me. Oh, my parents are 10 states away from me. My parents are five states away from me, depending on which way you take. Because that's true. Depending on which way you take from Arizona, California, you could be a state away or you could be five states away or you could be 30 states away. And I used to think that was so funny. And I still think it's very funny. And so people would say like, um, oh, that's lying. Like you lied. I'm like, I didn't lie, though, because it really just depends on which way you take. And so you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm happy to play word games like that when it's strangers who aren't owed my information. You know what I'm saying? But if it's like a partner I'm dating and they really need to know the answer, well, then I'd obviously like be very blunt with my answers and make sure they completely understand because you can't get real consent from people unless they really understand, right? Um, Vash says, um, have you ever watched DS9? You sound like the character Garonk. No, Garrick? No, I don't. Garonk? Garrick. No, I don't know that series. What about lies of omission? So I do think lying in omission can be bad or can be good. Like, again, I think that omitting information is your right to privacy. But if you admit things like I have HIV or I have uh, STIs, well, and you go around having sex with people like, no, you don't you can't you shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't do that. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I feel bad about that one. Why do you feel bad? Well, because they... I especially think people who demand to know things about me that I've already said I'm not going to tell you especially aren't owed straight answers. You know what I mean? You seem like a very sweet person, but I am not attracted to them. I like the earrings. Thank you. The snakes. Lily, like... why shouldn't someone date you? I'm very comfortable being alone. I was single for a very long time and it was perfectly fine being that way. But I do, of course, like make time for the people I'm seeing or my partners or anything like that. Yeah, if somebody's gonna be in your life, they have to add something to it. Exactly. Right there. It took me a long time to learn I'm not introverted per se. <laughs> I am a very picky extrovert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of an introverted extrovert a little bit. Yeah. I need time to recharge my battery, for sure. mm -hmm. definitely. And that insists of just Same. like home alone in my bed, reading a shit ton of fan fiction. <laughs> which for is which kind of my thing. Stuff. The main one is Game of Thrones. I was in Les Mis when I was younger. I've done my share of fanfic reading. <laughs> How attractive do you find each other? I would say... Okay, so fan fiction is another thing I see in big neurodivergent groups. I don't meet a lot of neurotypicals who read fan fiction, if any. I can't even think of any, really. And I will say fan fiction is something that I did not get to continue being interested in outside of high school. In high school, I loved Quizilla the website and I loved the fan fiction and I used to even write fan fiction about boy bands but outside of high school I just completely lost any interest I think because I became so aware of being a person probably because I became a content creator if I'm being honest the moment I became a content creator I just stopped being into fan fiction and I think it's because it would creep me out to see people writing fan fiction about me um, but I was in high school when I was in high school I liked fan fiction and I will say as a as a writer or a person who like had the aspiration to write when I was younger, I also disliked people who took someone else's story and made it their own. Outside of like people who've been dead for a long time, you know, I get it. But if they're still alive, it's like so strange. But again, like everyone has a different relationship with this. But yeah, I would say that, um, yeah, people who are into fan fiction seems to be pretty prevalent with my neurotypical friends. Neurodivergent friends, sorry. Yeah. Like... I want to do averages. <sighs> I would say that you are like above <clears throat> average. I think you're very cute. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. you're welcome. I would say you are pretty above average yourself. Thank I you. will also throw out there I am on the ace spectrum. Oh my gosh. Yes, Shadow B. I remember the days of Quizilla and vampire fiction. Bros. I have still some of my favorite stories in my head. Like, Quizilla really impacted me for the positive when I was a kid. Like, I really needed it. And I wrote on Quizilla myself. But some of those stories, like, I read hundreds, thousands of times. They really, like, my emo heart will never forget them. So, like, any attraction is mostly vibes I'm picking up. Yeah. But, um, I, I consider myself more gray ace. I don't yeah. ever see someone. I'm like, oh, I want to get in their pants. It's yeah. more like, I don't know, I want to get... 
Okay, wait. So for people who remember Quizilla and was on it, guys, like we're in a bubble. Think about the Quizilla bubble. It impacted me so much. None of my friends were on Quizilla like I was. Like some of them were for sure because they knew I was on it. But bros, in high school, I would get on the school computers because I did two years of public high school after being homeschooled all my life. And I was obsessed. It was like my window into the world. It was like my opportunity as a closeted like Catholic kid to have any opportunity to talk to the world or read about the world or know the world. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I learned about orgasms from like Quizilla. I learned about my body and oh my gosh, like Quizilla is so much nostalgia is associated with that website and me. Like I'm 34 years old and I cannot tell you how much that website impacted 15 year old Brittany. Just so much, like so much. 2005, six, seven, like, oh my gosh gosh like oh like i can't even tell you how much this website impacted me to, to know, know them the like individual mm. i feel like that just opened up avenues of like more genuine connection for you what about on your end the opposite end of the spectrum opposite, a little yeah. bit i'm kind of a whore a little bit just kind of put it out there i was Absolutely. immediately after love that for you girl a little bit of a hoe but I feel like everyone <gasps> Heather says no 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 not Heather sorry Destiny said everybody I knew used Wattpad I didn't like Wattpad I didn't like it I didn't like it you know I loved the Quizilla you should have a hoe face I'm sorry yeah, okay. I feel like we wouldn't be good as partners I feel like it would be more of a friendship that I would want with you yeah see ya see ya okay Hi, um, do you have any questions? We can always mm. ask the button to help us. How old is this human? Why does she look 56 and 32 and 27? She's so interesting. Does she not look all these ages? She looks great. Her hair is very shiny and nice. Her skin is beautiful. I like her clothes. Whoa. Sure, yeah, button. Do you want to give us something? Lillian, ask Angelina when she lost her virginity. <laughs> Yes, Shadow Beast says, I remember you making reference for Lust for a Young Girl's Blood a couple years ago. <gasps> Stop it. I'm gonna... Stop it. Literally raised me. Literally, that story raised me. I used to have it saved on a Microsoft Word document. Literally, I used to have it saved. I used to have it printed out, bros, and in a binder. Stop. <laughs> Angelina, when did you lose your virginity? I lost it at uh, 19 okay. to a man. A man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't really have like a whole discussion we about- didn't. We that, what didn't. I, what, what I am and stuff like that. It's, okay, so I'm a lesbian. A very, very proud uh, lesbian. It's the favorite thing what, about me. That's why my reaction was a man. A man. A man. Yes. So like, how did that come about? Um, I think I was just curious. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wanted to make sure and yeah, the first time's never fun. Mm -mm. I think I lost mine at 18. Okay. So I picked a random man off Tinder, just went window shopping, was like. Oh my God, Heather, I wish I was having an edible right now and I could like even get more into the nostalgia with you guys. Cause like le legit, like I wonder, I do like, yeah, Shadow B, I, I used to have it saved, but I, I don't have it anymore. And I always wonder like, you know, you go back and you read stuff that really impacted you and you're like, oh, interesting. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know, bros. Like, God, I'm not gonna lie. This makes me want to be 15 again. That one'll do. <laughs> Love it. Can you two rate each other uh. on a scale of 10? <laughs> I would say that you are a seven. I would say ditto right back at you. Yeah. Uh. Why sevens? I wish I had it again. Yeah, I don't have that story anymore. Anyways, I guess I'll pause. It is Go a good number. It. I feel like an eight is a knockout. Not that yeah. you're not a knockout, but Thank like you. an eight is somebody that I'm breaking my neck for. Not that I exactly. wouldn't break my neck for you, but like yeah. it's like somebody that stands out for me. Exactly. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So, uh, what do you do? Oh, cool. I work in marketing. That was like the most fascinating opening like both the vibes are so interesting okay. yeah so i moved out here a year ago okay from cool new york, so. from new york yeah that's where i'm from originally no way what part? yeah i'm staten island oh okay, okay. yeah i got out uh, pretty early though good, good, luckily good. Yeah. yeah yeah you know sure. i don't even have to explain want to get out of yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. are both of you looking for something romantic yeah i think i'm fragile right now i just went okay got out of a situation so a situation yeah I mean, girl. they could say it's a girl, red flag. Uh, 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 uh. No. 
No. Baby girl, no. 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 Also, the vibes here, the tension is so high. It's like not great. It's not great. It's not great. Alex says, did you finish Hunter Hunter? I I finished it. I loved it. I made love to it. I really want to make a levels video about it. It's just really hard for me to put all my thoughts together. But like, you know, you know. Oh, my God. This is just like, oh, this is weird energy. You know what I mean? Um, Illusual says, I don't know how to say your name. Illush, Illush, I'm, I'm giving up. V says, was she surprised that she's a trans girly? Honestly. So here's the deal. I don't want to put this energy out here because I don't know these people. These are real people. But what if she's a turf lesbian? It felt a little bit like that. It felt a little bit like she had just, like, it felt a little bit like that. But I could be really wrong. Like, so wrong. Because to be honest, like, she came in um, also very, um, very um, cold, which neurodivergence is fine. Like, it happens. But, yeah, I would say, like, okay, hold on. Okay, watch. Watch this whole dynamic again. Watch, watch like the coldness mixed in with the rejection, mixed in with the awkward vibes. And by the way, like this is like what's interesting, right? Because like if you're socializing with anybody and you know, like you can feel the vibes. You can feel it. So uh, what do you do? Oh, cool. I work in. What was that? Right? Like, so what do you do is a weird opener. Now, we don't know if cut, cut it that way. But that is a weird opener. So what do you do? It's like, oh, okay. No, like thoughts or whatever. Marketing. Okay. Yeah. So I moved out here a year ago. Okay, from cool. From New York. So. From New York? Yeah. That's where I'm from originally. No way. So she has like a, a lot of enthusiasm in her voice. She's very like, um, oh, okay. Now we're connecting. See, oh, good. We found something. So her initial reaction could just be that she was put off with the way that she initially came in. And it was like, oh. And you know what I mean? It was like hard. And then it like created a weird awkwardness, which again, totally like fine. Um, it's fine. Like, don't take it personal. It is what it is. But I wonder if that's what happened. You know what I mean? Wait, what part? Yeah, I'm starting out. <clears throat> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I got out uh, pretty early though. Good, good, Luckily. Good. Yeah, 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 you for know, sure. That's I don't the one even neighborhood you probably want to get out of. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't know if she was, um, V says, I don't know if she was surprised by the voice. I don't know if she was surprised by the voice or if she was surprised by the question. Because to me, it felt like it could have been either. And that's why I'm like, what is this vibe? I, I'm going to go with, because let's hope she's not a turf. I'm going to go with that she's just surprised by the question, which I also think would have been surprising. I don't think you're looking. Wait, wait. Kenny Rain says, I, oh my gosh, I've used that opener. What's a better opener? Well... Jobs can be personal to people. Like I know with myself, when I was going on dates during the pandemic, I didn't want to tell people what I did for a living because I didn't want um, I didn't want people to date me because I was a YouTuber. I didn't want people to ask me about my job. I, I will tell you that I've always had a, a struggle with that when people are like, oh, what do you do for a living? I say, do you know what I say? Is this a lie, guys? This is an example. When people, when my neighbors, they're like, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh. Um, I review philosophy and pop culture. I talk about philosophy and pop culture. Like, that's what I say. And so people are like, oh, or even like, you know, I work on the internet. Like, not even every country knows what a YouTuber is. So like saying a YouTuber is just weird. So I would say that a, a good opener is, hi, how are you? Like, that's a great opener. Actually, my partner makes fun of me every time I go to the, like, supermarket. I'm like, hi, how are you? And they're like, um, good, how are you? He's like, oh, you're such an American, asking people how they're doing. And I was like, stop it. For something romantic? Yeah, I think I'm fragile right now. I just went, okay. Yeah, you can't be fragile and out here dating. What are you doing? Why are you putting people's, like, don't go to... Get, figure your shit out bros like again every relationship is possible maybe you're you know you're vulnerable and you meet someone and you make it work but like why are people like literally fragile and then dating like what the hell got out of a situation so a situation yeah i mean they could say it's a relationship but it wasn't a relationship in my eyes um okay the... um isn't a relationship a situation ship a situation ship is a relationship the relationship you have with your neighbor is a relationship the question is, do we not agree that we were dating dating versus do we agree that we're just fucking? I, I don't think I've been in a situation ship. Hmm. Yeah, I, most of the time if I'm in something, I try to know I'm in it. Yeah. It doesn't work sometimes, but 
Yeah. 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 You're a, you're awesome. I'm gonna say that first off. I just don't think that you'd be my type. But okay. I... Hi, I'm Grace. Angie. Oh. Hi, Angie. Angie. Mm. How old are you? Oh, that's a great question. I <laughs> Jasmine says she's too old to say situationship. Just say lovers, bros. Like, let's be European about this. I have a lover. I have a lover. Like, is am I the only one that's like, I got a lover, bro? Not a relationship. Like, we're not dating, but it's a relationship. We're lovers. We're we're fuck buddies. But I like lovers. You know what I mean? Chan says you didn't tell them you are the head of a cult. Interesting choice. That's how I trick people into the cult. I'm 35. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm 22. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I've seen this. I've We've seen this girl. Was she on the other neurodivergent one? We've seen this girl for sure. 35 and 22. Eh, no. Sorry. No. Look, I'm not a big fan of age gap relationships. I think they rarely work. And when they do work, the person who's older is usually not mature enough to date in their age group. I said what I said. I said what I said. That's crazy. Okay, you are. I said what I said. I said what I said. Oh, my God. I said what I said. So, Grace is really, really. I think anything within five to 10 years is acceptable depending on how young the younger person is. But even 10 years is pushing it because I got a lot, I got a lot of cousins. They're about 10 years apart from their spouses. It's hard. 10 years is clear generational differences. So, okay, like I'm about it. You make it work for you, but I just, mm -hmm. Really picky about eyebrows. Oh, shit. <gasps> your eyebrows, I feel like are amazing. Thank you. No fear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. What are some of your dating deal breakers? I would never date someone who like wouldn't let me like slap them. In the face? Yeah. But is it like during certain scenarios? Yeah. Okay. Like I want someone who's I'm like guessing... open to trying okay. things. And like okay. I'm more of like a sadist than a masochist. Okay. Like, it's not people... like just walking down the street and you want to yeah. slap somebody in the face. No, like it's yeah. definitely between yeah, yeah, stop it so much. Hold on, the text is kind of fucked on the, the YouTube, but you said I momentarily questioning, I was momentarily questioning the cult thing when I realized how often I bring up what you say to people in my life. Stop, that's so funny. That's so fucking funny. Okay. Yeah, okay, I, don't yeah I don't know. You're just too young for me. That's yeah. The only thing. I'm like 12 it. years older than you. For sure. 13. <laughs> but it was great meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Take care. I don't mind being slapped, by the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I dare you to ask the next person if they like to be slapped in bed. I'm not asking you. Scaredy cat. <laughs> Hi. Hello. The button just called me a scaredy cat. Well, what, why the hell do you do that? Because it, it, it dared me to ask you a question. But let me introduce okay. myself first. All right. um, I'm Angie. I'm Kit. Kit, nice to meet you. Kit is a very special human. Kit is a very unique looking human. What category does Kit belong to? Right? Like, love the sweater, love the vibe, love the mesh of colors, love the gender bending, love the mesh of everything. But, like, this human, build a bear, right? Like, you gotta be a very specific person to date a person like Kit. And I love that for them, right? And, like, that's the thing that I'm trying to say. You can be as unique of a snowflake as you wanna be, like myself. You still gotta find the right person for you to vibe with because they have to, they have to really love you for you. You can't mask this away. You can't hide this away. You're not gonna. You're not going to blend in a group of Orange County, pink-wearing, blonde-dyed bitches. You hear me, girl? Ooh, art student. Yes, art student bubble would thrive. Agree. Agree. Nice to meet you. Uh, Go right ahead. Oh, <laughs> scaredy cat. Yes. Oh, savage. Uh, yeah, do you like being <clears throat> slapped? No, I am in my soft era. <laughs> so I, I do not like being slapped. No, more of a cuddler. Ah, kid is absolutely a furry, Yaya says. I mean, possibly the glasses, the kitty, the kitty one, maybe. Maybe. I mean, we love a furry, also a minority group. Okay, <laughs> like that. Can you two take turns talking about how either being neurodivergent or on the mm. spectrum has affected your dating life? A lot, of, right? a lot of people get embarrassed in public if, if you're just like goofing off while they're like walking around. And they're just like, no, just act, act normal. We're in a library. Yeah. <laughs> So like I have uh, acute ADHD. Mm -hmm. Interesting, love that. Um, Ellis says I've been dating my guy intentionally for five years, and we have seventeen years between us. Can you tell us what bubble you're in, and why five years? Um, how old you are? Why? Uh, how do you guys get along? How does it overlap? 
Um, are you dating for long-term cohabitation? Are you dating for more like we live in separate apartments, but we do life together? We plan to like share money together. Like what's your particular category of relationship? If you want to share, no pressure. And when my doctor said that, I was like, what's cute about it? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what's cute about it? <laughs> about it funny. yeah it, i guess i just don't care as much but that's about, like a superpower that's of not so caring. funny honestly it's a superpower of not caring mm -hmm. because the more we care the more we cap ourselves what are your special interests if it helps mine's literally just like i like dogs and organizing things Is that cats something? and walks okay walks. See, that's, yeah that's yeah, yeah okay fine. cool that, was, that, that definitely <laughs> helped no i did um 10 miles yesterday i'm crazy oh my I'm lord crazy. So my legs are like dying so. <laughs> Whoa. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's good. It's great meeting you, though. What are you looking for in a relationship? I just want somebody that's, like, comfortable going out on, like, adventure, like, little adventures together, not, like, a 10-mile walk. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Kit. It's nice to meet you. So, uh, what brings you here? Um, well, they called in for the weirdos, and I guess we're all just here today. Um, do you have any hobbies? Yeah, um, I, I'm really into just like training and walking my dogs a lot. Um, mm. And I also, I do video games and drawing. Yeah, um, I do some video games myself, but I haven't been playing as much as I used to because I kind of miss like the older version of games and I kind of mm. do like some computer art myself. Timothy, what's your type? Probably someone who's like chill like me and uh, mm -hmm. just someone who matches my energy and accept me for who I am. No, that's valid. Some people are good with the opposites attract thing but sometimes there's like a an energy limit yeah see like not a vibe very sweet in their own right but the energy is like not there right yeah I'm sorry <laughs> it's the energy thing i think i think i'm a little more bubble bubbly-ish oh, i you, guess oh, energetic you're good. no worries yeah <laughs> hi there sweet hey. beans i'm kit i'm matt nice, nice to, to meet, meet you, you. I, I like the sweater. I was literally about to say I love your fit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my dog did some modifications for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Funnily enough, so my... Uh, homie, you have a whole ass hole in your sleeve, sir. Why do you still have that jacket? Why do you still have that jacket? I'm so confused. My shepherd actually destroyed something last night. Yeah. But an expensive something. Um, I'm missing a front tooth right now. Alexi says neurodivergent people are boring. I mean, they're like everybody else. No. Know? It was my retainer that has the, the tooth on it right before this was supposed to happen. Oh. But, but yeah, so I was like, yeah, okay, going, going to do the button with a, with a tooth missing. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> what is something you're ready for? Miss, miss interrupting button. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, Damn. <laughs> I guess I have trust issues, but it's just because I've had a lot of cheaters get on me, you know, in the past. Yeah. That's um, the tough part about, like, getting out of those trust issues mm -hmm. is, like, it's coming from real life experience. It's not coming from nowhere, which yeah, is uh, tough. I guess the other one might be I, I sleep a lot. Um, but it's because I have narcolepsy. <laughs> so Whoa, I have an excuse. Not exactly your choice. Whoa. But it is kind of a flag because I've had uh, friends or, or dates uh, get frustrated that I'm yeah. just like, I want to sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I get that. I'm like, I'm chronically ill in multiple fashions. Mm -hmm. So I feel that for sure. Narcolepsy is such an interesting one. Like, that's so interesting. Oh, that's interesting. See, like, there's always a limitation. You know how I've been saying that recently where I'm like, yeah, like, look, just because you're neurodivergent doesn't mean you're going to get along with every neurodivergent. This is like a great example. You have to have the right overlap. You have to have the right compatibility. You have to have the right, like, oh, does my neurodivergency trigger your neurodivergency? You know what I mean? So what are, what are your flaggies? You might button click <laughs> me for this one, but I had an alcohol problem a while back that mm. did lead to a lot of cheating on a lot of my partners. And that was like, it's in it the was past, over though. five years ago oh, now. Okay. I'm much in a much healthier place. Okay. Alcohol okay. Table, I believe. Okay. 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 We don't believe once a cheater, always a cheater. And he brought it up right away on the first date. So major plus, major plus. And people being able to change. Uh, over stuff like that. Yes, <laughs> I don't know. I, it's like, I guess it's not as big of a deal. That's, I mean, I guess it's good to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay. I feel like you two are getting along really well. Oh, are we? Yeah, I've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is this a vibe? Is it a vibe? It's so weird because they're so opposite in terms of presentation and color. But like opposites can attract. I mentioned, I think but do not... they maintain? I'm going to light up one more time. If you don't press me, then I'm going to consider this a match. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I'm going to press it. Okay. I feel like okay. the vibe more is friends That's than fine. anything else. Yeah, okay, good. Nice to meet you. Okay, good. I just felt like they weren't going to live the same lifestyle. So, so again, we're going to live the same lifestyle. You feel me? Hang out mm. or anything outside of this. Let me know. Okay, good, good, good. We're going to have to end today because we got no matches. Oh. I feel like I get along with a lot of people. And when it comes to relationships or like anything more than friendships, it's... I don't know. I'm a little picky, I guess. Mm. Of course, it's worth $12 million, but... Do you like... Whoa, whoa. Slap? So... Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is happening? Of course. What is literally like happening? I'm being a boomer right now. That's what's happening. Yeah, I gotta say, like, um... You know, sometimes it just ends up that way. You know what I really appreciate, though, is that nobody settled... Everybody just was like really honest and no one gave into the pressure of continuing it. I think that's really damn good. You know what I mean? You know? Okay, I gotta I gotta get my aquaphor. I'm dying without it, guys. I'll be right back. I'm dying Okay, just had to grab my tub. I just, I really needed it. Okay, I also got some on my upper lip. Hello, ma'am. Mm -mm 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 yeah, I really appreciated everyone's energy. I think it's so easy to feel the pressure just to go out with people, but I love that none of them did that. Okay. The next video is a little bit more serious. And then we'll probably call it a day since I need to eat. Okay, so the next video is, um, oh, let's see here, hold on. There's this like fruit fly because we're in fruit fly, fruit fly season. He only comes out when I'm filming my videos and he always comes. I think it's the light. I think they're just like attracted to it's one single one. He's so annoying. Um. Okay. He's so freaking annoying, bro. Let's switch to the new video. <sighs> okay, this video is called, Is it wrong to divorce my disabled husband? This is a big one. This is from Dr. John Deloney's show. I don't know if you guys know who he is. My brother is obsessed with him and I've been watching him too. And then one of my viewers recommended this video to me and asked me to do a video on it. And he is a therapist. He shows up on the Dave Ramsey show a lot. That's how I know him from that bubble. And I think he gives really solid advice and I think that he tries to help people and he's very compassionate and he's very thoughtful. And so I thought we'd go ahead and watch this one since it comes up a lot in, in my little bubble where we talk about a lot about like, dis, you know, disabilities. And when do you know it's time to break up with your partner? And uh, what is it like being neurodiv neurodivergent and dating your partner? And is that reason to break up with somebody? So um, let's definitely let's definitely talk about this. Um, oh, OK, bro, this fruit flight is driving me crazy. Okay, let's go ahead and watch this. Whoa, that's loud. All right, let's go out to Denver, Colorado and talk to the great Diane. What's up, Diane? Is that too loud? Should I turn it down? Hey, John Deloney, how are you? <laughs> I'm so good. How about you? Good. What's up? So I have got a kind of moral, ethical dilemma going on in my personal life. And I have a son-in-law and daughter who listen frequently, and he said, you know who you need to ask is Dr. John Deloney. So, so here we I'm are. Gonna, huh? 
here we are. And I'm not I'm, a very hoping... moral or ethical person, <laughs> so just so you know. Well, I have listened to you enough yes, to know that is not true. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of lay it all out there. A it's a kind of a long story. I'm gonna make it as brief as I can okay, because a bit. Uh, go it's, for it. It's a, uh, <sighs> it's been a, it's been a long few years. Go so, for it. Five years ago, first of all, I'm 49 years old. I am married for 30 years to just the most amazing man. We have eight incredible kids. And um, five years ago, we took the kids up to the mountains about three hours away from home, went mountain biking, and he was in. He crashed his bike, very, mm. very severely suffered um, a traumatic brain injury mm. that almost killed him. Um, we spent two months in local hospitals, five brain surgeries, had half of his skull removed, coma, you know, the, all the everything just horrible couple of months he regained consciousness enough that they accepted him to a rehab hospital eight hours away they said for two months we'll do rehab and do the best that we can so I packed up left my kids with family members and I went um, to this rehab hospital for two months and that two months stay due to a very serious stroke and seizures turned into a seven month stay and we finally got to go home he came home with a trach in um, a feeding tube in his stomach I had to learn how to put a catheter in I'll you know I learned how to take care of him so we could bring him home I had so much faith John the whole time he would be healed I just I knew it and I'm a religious person and we had so much faith and we were so hard I knew he would be he would get better at least better enough that we could carry on a conversation with him he would be somewhat himself okay for a second there I was like girl why do we think he was going to get healed but okay carry on a conversation enough to be himself okay that's fair this is devastating by the way super fearful I saw a TikTok about this the other day where a lot of people will say, like, I can't handle this. I can handle disability. I can't handle this if it happens to me. But we are all one accident away from being disabled in this capacity. We are all one accident away, one heart attack, one stroke away. We are all one thing away, one baby away from dealing with severe disability. And over the next two years of having it, him at home, it was a lot of work. Um, and he just never really got better he did learn to walk again we taught him to walk great um but ultimately his injuries are he lost hearing he's completely deaf okay um and he has no short-term memory so we can't even teach him sign language because he can't learn new things he knows my kids um he knows anything that happened 10 years ago or more but anything that's happened about two years before the accident and anything current, he has no idea. He doesn't remember he's had three kids get married. He has grandkids. I have an eight-year-old. He was kind of our surprise baby, and he doesn't. He knows that he has an eight-year-old but doesn't really know him. He forgets their name sometimes. He has no concept of space or time or age or distance. All of that part of his brain was damaged um and two years ago i decided for the sake of my kids' lives moving on in mind that i needed to put him into a facility so he's in an assisted living facility just a few miles from home we go see him all the time um a couple months after we put him in that facility we made some medical decisions decided it was time to let him go and we put him on hospice and thought the time would come that he would pass. And it's been almost two years. And despite all medical odds, science, everything, he's still with us. Pretty much no quality of life. Um, we've prepared ourselves to let him go so many times when it looked like everything was heading that direction. And he's still with us. And it's just been so hard to know how to move on um through this process i got my master's degree 
I, you know, I went back to school. I, I was recently, I've become an LCPC, so I'm able to work now and provide for my family. Awesome. So my question is, sorry that took so long, but here's my question. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, before we ask you a question. Okay. Can I just sit with you in that for a minute? Damn. Yeah. That's so, so much. It's a lot, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. I know. This could be a whole Hollywood movie that would last 10 hours. So My um, oldest, best friend on planet Earth is a traumatic brain survivor. And um, when I'm with him now and we go out, I still have to help him go to the bathroom. Um, mm-hmm. Still have to still have to have people take care of him and help him. Um, Damn. And I can't imagine going up 100x that with building a life with somebody. Damn. That's a lot. I want to answer this question in the chat. Um does it sound like to anyone else that she kind of wants him to die? I think within reason, when there's too much suffering, often we think death is a release from pain. And it is technically. And that's why there's this question. That's why certain countries around the world do allow people to have assisted death. I think it can come from a malicious place. And I think it can come from a really really well-intentioned place i fully would love to sign paperwork that would allow my partner to seek out assisted death for me if i ever got dementia or alzheimer's like i if i was ever super paralyzed if i was ever in a situation where it became extremely complicated and i basically wasn't aware enough to be myself with him um I would love for him to have access to that possibility. Um, And at the same time, like, if he wants to keep me alive and take care of me, I get it. But he's not allowed to put me in a home. And he's not allowed to let me stay with my parents. He has to either take care of me or find a government agency that will let me die peacefully. Um, Because I don't want to be trapped in my body with a bunch of strangers around me. So I think there's something really kind and important and i think eventually humans will evolve to having like ethical assisted death um i don't want to call it suicide because i think suicide is usually from a desperate position um i think like this is just really difficult and a, a reasonable situation in which hey can we have a conversation about this right um, my partner, on the, other, on the other hand, would like to live forever. And if he ever is in this position, I will take care of him forever because that's his wishes. And I'm happy to do that. And we laugh about it all the time. I was like, you better you better let me die. And he's like, yeah, like, that's your wish. I get it. But at the same time, like, I also am open to letting him take care of me if he really wants to. But he has to take care of me. He can't put me in a home and he can't give me to my parents. Like, he can't give me to a stranger. He has to either take care of me or find a government that will let me die. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, we talked about this in depth. You want to talk about preparations for marriage? We went through what we would do. And I asked him, like, how would you like your day to be? I said, you're in a position where I can't communicate with you clearly. What would you like me to do throughout the day? Would you like to watch One Piece? Would you like to watch anime? Would you like me to give you two hours a day of s- seclusion? Would you like me to put on um, Asmongold? And you can watch Asmongold. I love Asmongold. Um, we talked about it. We talk about it. We update our plan. We tell each other, like, hey, if I'm trapped in my body and I can't communicate with you, like, put me outside a lot. Like, for me, for my wish, I was like, put me outside a lot. Um, Put on, like, some of my favorite classical music. You know, um, talk to me a lot. Like, let me watch my favorite YouTubers, I guess. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, we've talked about it. I think a lot of people don't talk about these things. I know Abin Preach covered a video a while back about this and how they think it's, you know, within reason that people leave these situations. But I don't quite understand it, but I understand it, right? Like, I can't fault this woman. But I also don't understand what any of it means in a way. Because, like, what does it mean in sickness and in health? What does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, I don't get it. And so sometimes, you know when people will say, um, 
Life isn't the notebook. Are they talking about when the couple's young or old? Because just a reminder, in the notebook, the point of that relationship is like that they're old together, that she doesn't always remember who he is, right? That she is sick and he stays with her. Even though she's in assisted living, he's there all the time. Even though his kids are like, dad, move on. He's like, I can't move on. She's the love of my life. And sometimes she remembers me. The point of the notebook is not their young relationship that's messy and toxic. It's their old relationship. It's the one they build into. So again, like I can't fault people for having these thoughts. The question is like, I don't think for me it's ever a question of how do I move on? The question is, how do I get the funding so I can make our life more comfortable? But like, how am I supposed to move on? Like, I don't really get that, right? Like, I can't move on from a kid. I'm not going to move on from a spouse. Not if you married the right person. I do kind of feel like you could move on from somebody that you're not, I don't know, something. Like, my grandma had Alzheimer's. And we had to put her into a care facility. That was really painful. If we could have afforded to keep her at home, we would have. So my mom would visit her at all times of the week, sporadically. That way, if anyone was like abusing her, God forbid, we could like catch them. We would visit. I have so many pictures of me going around talking to all the senior citizens in the hospital. My grandma lived a life that was the best we could do for her, which is not the same thing. If we could have afforded it, she would have been at home with us. But my grandpa never moved on. He never, he was married until the day she died. He was married until the day he died. There was no moving on. Like she didn't stop being my grandma just because she couldn't remember any of us. You know what I mean? And like she didn't stop being my mom's mom just because she couldn't remember us. And she never stopped being my grandpa's wife just because he could, she couldn't remember him. Like he would go and visit her all the time. So I just, I don't really know what that means. You know what I mean? Like moving on. Moving on from what? You know what I mean? What do you mean I'm going to move on? Does she mean how do I learn to cope with the fact that my husband is in a hospital and I'm going to go see him? Or does she mean like how do I pretend he's already dead even when he's not dead? Is that what she's asking? You know what I mean? That's hard. You know what I mean? Because it changes everything, right? Oh, man. Changes the way you breathe. Yep. Yep. And my guess is, as a mom of eight, you've been solving and fixing. And by the way, that's really difficult to be a mom of eight, right? Like, my grandma had 17 kids. So my grandpa had 17 kids. But by the time my grandma had Alzheimer's, I mean, mo- the kids were grown, right? Um, So they weren't kid kids. So I get that, right? I do get that. Um, Yeah. For five years. Yeah, I have been. And then you went and got a freaking master's degree. Like at some point. Awesome. At, some, at some point. I know. Have you exhaled? You know, after about year one, I did. And I still had so much hope and so much faith. And we would work with him. See, I think that's my problem is like I wouldn't, if my spouse went through something traumatic like that, I would assume he was going to be like that forever. And I wouldn't need him to be better for me to stay with him. Though I can understand that thinking, right? I can understand it. I think it's pretty typical. Every day, work on walking, work on brain stuff. Like, don't let him just sit in front of the TV. Like, we got to work with him. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And then after about year three, I just really had to shift. Sorry. Uh, Ingrid says, my parents have already said they want to go to assisted living, so I probably won't take care of them. I think that's valid as well. I think a lot of people are fine with that. Um, I definitely come from a culture where, you know, we that's only like in the worst case scenario, like we cannot financially have an in-home nurse. Um, But yeah, I think that's really valid because some people do want that. Some people are like, send me to a facility. They know what they'll do. They know how to do things. Send me there. Right. Um, But yeah, I don't. It's so interesting. SF75 says, wait, you would leave. I wouldn't leave like I, Brittany, wouldn't leave. But I, Brittany, that's why I'm so like, hey, we need to be, I need to take my job seriously. I need to make money because if anything happens to us, I want to be able to afford to take care of my partner in the home. I really want to work really hard to be wealthy enough. I know you want to talk about why I want money in case I need to take care of any of my loved ones at home. I want to be so privileged 
that I can take care of my loved ones in home. That's the kind of privilege I'm aiming for. I am aiming to take care. Like, that's why I'm afraid to have kids because, like, I can't afford to take care of a disabled child. And if I want to be able to take care of people, I have to be ready for that expense. And as many of you guys know who have to do it, it is very expensive. And a lot of the time, we can only take care of our family members based off of our incomes. And that's why it's so difficult. If I could just give money to everyone who has to take care of like extreme family like issues like this, I would like, I almost want to make a fund for people because it is so serious. That's why it's just like, this is no joke. This really impacts families. And it just sucks. Like, I wish I could just make a tons of money and be like, okay, this is how we're giving out the money now. You know what I mean? Like, this is, th these are the people who need assistance. You know, literally, people will give up their whole lives to take care of their family members. There's some, you know, I wish, oh, man. Mm. Just my thinking that this isn't going <sighs> to turn out how I thought it would. <clears throat> um, so we ca we've, we've come to peace with it. In fact, we've come, we came to so much peace with him passing. That is what we've been praying for for the last two years, that it would be better for him. I mean, you know, you talk about your friend and, and, and how that is with him. My husband is the same way. He would be humiliated to see what he has become. This is not. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. I will say perspective is everything. And it would be hard to, to deal with that because I think I took care of my buddy. <laughs> so funny god rest his soul he died of cancer a couple years ago you guys know this story i took care of him he old cowboy like a cowboy cowboy like rough around the edges cowboy chew he chewed cowboy chew beer for water cowboy and i had to help him with everything had to empty out his bag and had to take him to the bathroom and had to and he would be like, don't follow me to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, what are you going to do? Slip and fall and break your old ass? Like, you better let me help you. He'd be like, you don't need to help me. I was like, oh, really? Do you think I'm just here for funsies at 2 a.m. in the morning? And he was like, and we had this great relationship. Like, we love, we loved, we just had a great relationship. But I told him, I was like, you better let me help you, bro. And he was like, Brittany, I do not need you to do this. I was like, oh, don't you? Are you going to do it by, like, and I would like tell him, I'd be like, oh, how are you going to feel when you die and your wife's going to come down the stairs and she's going to have to see your body? And he was just like, oh, and like, I was there when he died. We were there. It was a thing. And it was hard. But I'll tell you, and he had cancer. So like his thing was like very specific. Um, But he was embarrassed. And he felt like he wasn't man, a man enough. And I had to remind him that, like, needing help going to the bathroom is so human. It is exactly what being a man is who's dying of cancer in his old fucking age. What do you mean you're not man? What do you mean you're not man enough? What does that even mean? You're exactly going through what everyone else has to when they're in this situation. It's human. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I will wipe as many butts as I got to wipe. You know what I mean? It's life. Sometimes you got to let someone wipe your butt. Okay? Not what he would want. It's not. This is not the kind of life. I mean, he, if he had his right sense, he would say, why didn't you just let me go three years ago? Why did you keep me alive? And I listened to your last caller and it, it breaks my heart, the loss that she feels. And do you know what I'm thinking is, why can't I be one of the people whose husbands get to pass? I'm in the position where I'm jealous of women whose husbands just get to go peacefully and don't have to live mm. through this pain and agony that my family lives through mm. every day. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry. Because you're right. Hard. You're right. Hold on. You don't have to make me feel better. You've been you. You do that too much to everybody around you. <laughs> when you finally get a glimpse, they finally get a little peek behind the curtain, and they realize how much you're hurting. You have become so accustomed to making sure everybody around you feels okay. And at least, at least for these few minutes, that's not your job with me. 
Hmm. Damn. I get to be sad that in the in the effort to save somebody's life, yet again, we got so sophisticated with our <sighs> medical care that we have put mm. families in these positions. And <sighs> I'm sorry. So what's your dilemma question? Okay. So I recently, um, one of my husband's old friends that I... I'm sorry, before we go into it, this is Dr. John Deloney. He's one of my favorite people to watch on YouTube personally. Uh, my brother really loves him. My brother's like obsessed with his books and like his his show as well. So Dr. John Deloney, D-E-L-O-N-Y. Um, look him up on YouTube. I, I watch his stuff pretty frequently. Didn't know before we knew each other reached out. I, I had a Caring Bridge account, you know, Facebook. I kind of would keep friends and family up to date. And I haven't posted anything for a really long time. So he just reached out, said, how's he doing? How's the family doing? So I responded and we kind of struck up this friendship. Um, oh, no. Of, no, Diane. Not, no, 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 no. Listen, All it right. does not go where you think it's going. <laughs> That's right. my dilemma. But it was just nice. It was It awesome. was nice to have somebody <sighs> talk to me. Yeah. On that level. It was, it was nice to have somebody check in at night saying, how are you doing? He's divorced, so he's single, but I'm married. And I promise you it has not gone anywhere. That's, okay, can I say something? Like, this is where my mom, okay, I'm channeling my mother. My mother would say, hey, a man should know better than to inquire on how a female is doing when she's in a hard position where her husband cannot be with her in the husbandly way. That a female or person she's not attracted to or a sibling should be the one reaching out to see how she's doing. Because people will cling to any sense of normal when they're in a very abnormal situation. And that is where temptation will come in. You know, as Catholics raised in the Catholic bubble I was raised in, you are responsible for the temptation you lead people down. You are responsible for the temptation you you put in front of people, Right. And so this man should be considerate of how confusing it might be for this woman to have a man look after her. She might not even like him. She won't even know if she likes him because she's in such a bad place. She might just cling to the first anybody who shows her an ounce of consistency that's also technically available for partnership. Like that's what's so hard. We don't even know if she's trauma bonding with him right now. We don't even know if she actually likes him because of the situation. You know what I mean? It just, You're not, and listen it, to me. Listen wouldn't... to me. You're not crazy. You're not a bad person. Right. Of course. Totally normal. Okay. It's totally normal. Okay. Here's my. This is my fear. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm not saying this about this man, but so many bad people, so many narcissists, oh, N word here, will come into people's lives while they're suffering to use this as an opportunity to like make them theirs do you get what i'm saying like again i'm not saying this is what's happening but just red flag so many people will come to you when you're at the lowest of your life as an opportunity to like take advantage of your vulnerability and that's why i think it's so important to let people mourn relationships instead of being like oh did you just get out of a relationship oh are you going through something right now <laughs> let me slide into those dms <laughs> it just broke my mouth Wait, did I break it? No. Okay, it's still working. It's still working. Question. Okay. It's this is it's kind of a doozy. Okay. There's, no, I am <laughs> there's no doozies on the show. Go for it. <laughs> I am considering getting a divorce. Okay. So that I can move on with my life. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Nothing with my boom, 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 boom. Okay, I fixed my mouse. <laughs> Wait, narcissist is the new N-word? Sorry, oh God, my allergies are so gross right now. I'm so sorry. Um, but yes, it's the new N-word. <laughs> it's the one in this bubble that matters the most. The other one is the, not our business. But damn, like, oh my gosh. Okay, guys, what do we think? Getting a divorce so she can move on. Now, I'll tell you, there was the celebrity. Do you guys know who this is? A black couple, very famous woman. She had Alzheimer's and she gave her husband permission to date other people and move on but he had to still take care of her so it was a very famous couple they made the news about it and i thought that was a really good setup take care of me 
but yes, you can move on with your life. But you better take care of me, girl. I think that that is fine for a lot of couples. It's not how my partner and I would do things, but it is, I think, really, really valid. Meaning, don't abandon me. Don't move on and pretend I didn't exist. But of course, like, Habibi, if I can't hang out with you, if I can't talk to you, I totally get it. But please make me a part of your life. Now, the dilemma with that is it would take a very strong and specific person to marry somebody who's still taking care of their ex who's disabled. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think that's possible to do it, but I think it would take very strong. Oh, B. Smith. Is that who it is? B. Smith? I think you're right. I think that it takes a very special group of people to make something like that work. My relationship with my husband would change. Maybe. One thing I didn't. I'll Google B. Smith. I think it might be. Say about his, um, you know, kind of his personality is he, he's very apathetic. He doesn't care about anything. I walk in, he smiles at me. I could tell him yeah. his kids took. Sorry, B. Smith is right. I have to rewind this. I missed it. I need to hear it. Yes, B. Smith is correct. I don't know if that's exactly her story, but that was the story I remember. You know what I mean? Hold on. Nothing with my relationship with my husband would change. Once it's kind of a doozy. There's no, I, <laughs> there's no doozies on. Getting a divorce. Okay, let's listen. Okay. So that I can move on with my life. Okay. Nothing with my relationship with my husband would change. One thing I didn't say about his, um, you know, kind of his personality is he, he's very apathetic. He doesn't care about anything. I walk in, he smiles at me. I could tell him his kids took his truck and wrecked it or whatever that he wouldn't, he wouldn't mm -hmm. care. He, he isn't capable of caring about anything. So we go see him. It's mostly for us. He doesn't remember. He doesn't really care. And, um, just this little encounter I've had with this man. It made you made feel, it made you feel alive. Again. Really it made you feel alive. Question. Again. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like, would it be so bad if I, divorced him just for the sake of getting my feet out of the concrete I feel like I'm stuck in and start to imagine a future because for so long we thought he's going to pass any day, any day, any day, any day, and we've lived thinking he's going to pass. And now I'm thinking he could live another 10 or 20 years. Like his heart and lungs are pretty dang good. His brain's yeah. pretty shot, but Damn. He could live a long time like this. And what does that mean for me and my kids? Mm. I, There's a lot of layers here. It sounds like in all of the, if I was to distill down, well, let me say this. I want to be careful how I do this because I don't want anyone listening to this to think this is the right path for somebody who's having this conversation. OK, mm -hmm. so I am I am collapsing what would be a long time of you and I getting to know each other and hanging out and me getting to hear all the stories and developing mm -hmm. a relationship with you before I started asking you these questions. OK, you know, more than anybody else listening, Ugh. how awful and thoughtless and dumb and just stitched into pillows, the sayings you get lobbed at you all the time. Right. You. Critical Kitty says, I've had, I have a degenerative genetic disorder, and I've told my parents and partner to let me go if I become too far gone. Signing papers with the lawyers and knowing I won't be kept alive, like, that was a relief. I think there's something in that, too. I feel very similarly, personally. Again, I think it just matters. Like the That's why I say, like, you have to know the consciousness that you're dating, the person that you are, because you're really letting someone into your mind, body, and soul. You're living a life with them. You're sharing a bank account with them, hopefully. You're having a relationship with them that says, like, let's do life together. And then let's do the hard parts of life as well together. And the hard parts of life are just too dang real for so many of us. Like, I am very scared that I'll lose my sense of self. I won't know who my partner is. Like, what if I do get Alzheimer's? What if I get dementia? Like, we, I'm fully aware that this could happen. And I just don't want to live with that burden of fear that I'm just going to be too much but also like I Brittany am not a consciousness that is looking for to doing this okay so I don't want to do it either and so I would love to live in a world like if I had to shift the bubbles I would focus on making sure people have a way out a way out of their jobs a way out of their relationships a way out of their life into joy and I think the more people that sought out joy would need less outs 
That's the irony. In a world where people had more outs, we would also need less of them. You know what I mean? Critical Kitty says, my mom is Catholic, so I was afraid she'd keep me alive like she's done with pets that would should be euthanized. Bro, same. I told my partner, you cannot give me to my mother. I love her. But my mom would make me go to church every day, and she'd play Catholic stuff all the day. Even when I go home now, my mom just has the Catholic channel on 24-7. And it literally, like, ooh, it, I'm not going to lie. If I hear it enough, I do get triggered. Like, it's a lot. Like, not that I get literally triggered, but I just move away from it. But it's a lot to just listen to, like, all all day <laughs> you've got that for mm-hmm. five years okay right so i don't want to i don't want to contribute to that all day. but at the same time for the sake of this i've got to, i've got to expedite a lot of this okay so this is just sure. you and me same side of the same side of the booth just figuring this out okay actually i'm not really okay. the same side of the booth kind of guy so we're looking across <laughs> from the booth each, at each other Heather says, I've been a caretaker, and if you haven't been there, you don't know the long-term burnout. Cheating is wrong, and this looks bad. Might be bad, but I understand her feelings. No, I think they're totally reasonable. Like, for the record, I think her feelings are reasonable. I, I think that if she knows her husband and knows that she he would want her to move on, I think this is so valid. I hope she still takes care of him, though. I hope she doesn't forget he exists. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I hope she doesn't literally be like, eh, fuck him. Like, I hope she is able to remember he exists and to have a relationship with the person who gave her eight children. And at the same time, I hope she's able to move on if that's what her husband would want, if that's what she would want. Like, like, yeah, Kenny's right. Tough situation for everybody, right? So I, I do think that there can be something that could be negotiated because I get it. Like, I get how hard this can be, but people don't talk about these things. They don't know themselves enough to know what they would want. Then they get put in this situation, and then it's horrible for everyone all over again. Talk to your partners about what they would want if this happened. Watch this video with your partners. Go home and say, hey, seriously, what are your thoughts around this? Like, I have 12 years of content on the internet making it clear to people I would want to be put down. Like, I would want to die peacefully. Thank you. Don't, like, torture me, okay? Like, kill me nicely. But I have years on the YouTubes. I have years in my family. I have years saying it to everyone around me. Do not keep me alive because of your religion. Do not keep me alive because you, you know, whatever. Um, My partner knows what I would want. And in sickness and in health, we want to be together. And, again, if he takes care of me, I'm fine. But if he puts me in a home, he forgets I exist, he divorces me, you better kill me, bro, legally and with government assistance. Like, you better put me out of my misery, right? Like, legally and with government assistance. This is important, okay? But don't abandon me and then be like, oh, but you have to stay alive because that's just how the law works. Like, no, fuck you for abandoning me and then making me stay alive. Um, no. It sounds like <clears throat> through all of your prayers, the chief prayer overall has been, I want this to be exactly as I want it. True. Ooh, true, doctor. I want this to, the outcome of this to be exactly what I want it to be. True, true. Exactly the vibe I was getting from her. God bless her. Yes, Yeo says, uh, Brittany, do you think it's rare that couples talk about these scenarios? Yes. I think it's rare anyone talks about anything, apparently. I think everyone just assumes I'll be hot and young forever. I'll be rich and great forever. I'll have my job forever. I think everyone just assumes a lot. And nobody talks to their freaking kids about it. Nobody is honest about how life can get hard. Everyone just pretends like, oh, it won't be me, though. Every other people get disability. Not me, though. Other people get in an accident. Not me, though. Other people get paralyzed, but not me, though. And then when shit hits the fan, it's like, oh, my God. How could this happen to me? Because you're human, dude, and you're a statistic. That's how. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, you know how I know this, too? is because I bring it up on dates. Listen to the internet fucking trying to drag me and say I'm insane for the way I date. How dare I ask someone on the first date, hey, if you want to be with me forever, just curious, like, what's your life look like? How dare I ask you about your STIs, your financial status? How dare I make sure that we want the same things in life? Go fuck yourselves. Like, I'm so sick of people telling me I'm crazy for what I want. But God damn it, you're sitting here in relationships where you don't even know the like the birthday of your partner. You don't even know the color of their eyes. Girl, I don't want to hear it, girl. I don't want to hear it. Please. And mm. wrestling with praying for and i've done this 
praying for someone that I love <sighs> to go ahead and pass, and then they don't. And then I have the mm-hmm. guilt that I prayed for them to die. Mm-hmm. And I can't breathe. And then I go through these like, well, I guess I'll, I guess they're here to teach me something as though that's their job, right? It, it just, it, Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. The number of children I've seen while we're in the hospital with no visitors is so heartbreaking. I couldn't imagine living a life without my son. My son is my life. Amen, sister. Could you, like, I could, my heart would break. People do not, oh, it's like the way people out here, the way people are out here talking about how, like, oh, I'm amazing parents. I'm amazing. The moment shit gets hard, really hard, not bullshit hard, not like I chose the wrong partner and, like, but blah, blah, blah. like when you think you've chosen the literal right partner and the literal like cho- choice to have a, ch- a child and then it goes wrong, y'all ditch. That's fine. Go ahead and fucking ditch. But that's what you're doing. You're ditching. You're ditching when you claim to have found the love of your life, when you claimed to want a child so badly. But the moment it's inconvenient, I get it. Life is stressful. Life is so hard. It is so hard. Stop making babies you're unprepared for. Stop telling yourself you'll commit to a person you're unprepared to commit to. And you have to commit to the unknown. You have to say, I don't know what's in in store for us, but it might go t- horribly bad. And if you think you can't handle it, don't do it. But people will do it because they want to believe they can handle it. Fine. They want to do it because they're not bad people. Like this woman here is not a bad person. She's not bad. But she is not accepting her situation at the same time. There's a there's a misalignment with accepting her situation because she keeps praying for something different and actually understanding like did we take vows or didn't we take vows? And at the same time like don't be in a relationship that's too much for you. But man, how would she feel if she was in the same situation, right? Like, again, talk about these things ahead of time so you don't have to be the couple who wasn't prepared. I don't know what to do for the people who are unprepared. That sucks, right? We got to do what we can do. But if you are not in that situation yet, if you haven't had kids yet, talk about it. Make sure you're prepared for having a child who can't swallow their own food, who can't blink their own eyes, who can't speak or verbalize them like for themselves. Ask yourselves the question, what if we have a child that is so unique It's going to transform our whole sense of existence. What if you or I have an illness that makes it so it has to transform our whole sense of existence? And be prepared for the very tough answer of, I don't know. I might not be able to handle it. It might kill me as a person. It just, it never stops. It never stops. Right. Right. Something I'm supposed to get out of this. There's still something I'm supposed to learn. That's right. I guess you said it best earlier. It's there's a coming to terms with the fact that all the things you've prayed for the last five years, many of them have come true. They just haven't come true in the ways that you wanted them to. Yeah. And the great challenge of just being alive is dealing with that gap of what we wanted versus what we get. Mm -hmm. What I thought this would look like Mm -hmm. versus reality. Mm -hmm. And that's the worst. That's grief. Right? That's the black hole. Mm. Mm. And so going back, going back to what you said, this is for you. I would suggest you're not crazy. I can't imagine how alive right. you must feel to have somebody check in on you. Right. Totally. Who mm. also might be a little bit cute. Mm. Mm-hmm. Amen. I cannot imagine how lonely it is. Mm-hmm not being intimate with somebody when they're right there. Mm. All of it. All of it. True. But just from the few minutes I've heard you on the phone, I'm trying to project out a year from now. Would you be able to breathe? This isn't a judgment question at all. This is a curious question. This is me just asking Diane. Great question. If I were to divorce him, would I be able to breathe? Is that what you're asking me? Mm -hmm. I think I would. Mm. I I don't foresee that me getting a divorce would change 
anything with him. I would has still, nothing to do with I, him. Has nothing to do with him. It has to do with you saying for sickness and in health. Right. I know he he won't know up from down. Day mm-hmm. one from day but seven. She'll know. He won't know. But she'll know. That's this is this is why I say it has to do with you. Your loneliness has nothing to do with other people. Your vows have nothing to do with other people. They're about you. When you cheat, it's not because your partner made you cheat. You're the one who agreed to the circumstance. So once again, you start with yourself. Diane starts with herself. She calls Dr. John, talks to existence, comes back to herself. This is her decision. This isn't Dr. John's. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's not her child's and it's not her husband's. It's hers. Does Diane have a relationship with her consciousness that coincides with her values? And is she going to go down the path that coincides with those values? Or is she going to change her values, shift them? Is she doing them because they're honest? Are they doing them because they're afraid and tired? And then she has to live with herself. This is what I mean to say. Like, you have to come together with somebody that is going to make decisions, right, that coincide with their values. Because when shit gets hard, when temptation arises, they still have to make decisions that coincide with their values. Because of course temptation is going to be there to tell you, you don't need to do this. You can be anything you want. Leave them. Ditch them. They never even loved you. Are they even the same person? You will. <sighs> and so as as terms of your covenant, like this idea, and again, I, I use that word intentionally, and I'm not even using yeah. it in, in a religious context. I'm just saying there's so few forevers anymore in our culture. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you say, no, 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 I'm in forever and – Yeah. And I don't have to look Diane in the mirror. You do. <sighs> so if it's like, yeah, no, I've done, I've done my duty. And if my husband was alive today, nobody knows him like me. It's been 30 years mm-hmm. together. Um, he would be saying, what are you doing? Go hook up with one of my greatest friends. Yes. At least you'd be taken care of. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you say, I'm going to figure out how to feel alive and be alive inside of the parameters life, inside of this deck of cards, this hand of cards that life has dealt me. Because I said forever. I guess at the end of the day, I can't let you off the hook either way. Yeah. I can tell you what I would do, but I don't think that's helpful here. And I can also tell you, telling you what I would do right now on this side of this thing actually happening probably mm-hmm. isn't um, even true. Mm. Yeah, this is not something I, in fact, people started asking me early on, you know, would you have, you know, have you thought about divorcing him? What did you, and I just was like, absolutely not. Like that is a ridiculous idea. And it's just been long enough. Mm-hmm. I know if it were, if the roles were reversed, oh. knowing what I know now, I would tell him, go find somebody. Go find somebody to be with. And Yeah, wait, Alex C. made a great point. He still has memory, so he's not completely brain dead. Yeah, he can remember his kids and he can rem- Girl. Wait, he can remember. I would just keep taking photo albums of him and be like, hey, I know you don't remember this, but like FYI, our kids are grown. No. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't know if I believe her either. Alex says cap. I don't know if I believe her either. I think she's just stressed. I feel like she's just stressed because if he can remember everything 10 years and before, he can remember a lot. Yeah, now I'm extra confused. 
wait, he can remember. I totally forgot about it too. But he said, but she said no emotional response. What does that mean? Yeah, no short term memory, no re emotional response, but he remembers his past. He, remember his, he remembers his kids. Oh, see, now I'm confused. Be happy with. And one mm -hmm. thing, you know, I am a religious person. I've talked a lot about prayer. And Not religious enough, girl. Jesus died on the cross. You can't stay with your husband. Faith and my I don't religion. Know what religion she is. My husband and I were married in our in our temple, and we were married Mormon? for what we call time and all eternity. And so, one thing I know is if I were values, 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 values. Where are your values when temptation comes up? We're divorced from him. It would separate us for this life. But I know and fully intend on living with him in the next life. What is this? What is this magic we're evoking? What is this loophole we're evoking? What is this fucking, what is this loophole? God, I fucking hate cafeteria, fucking religious people. No offense, God, I love you all. Jesus, y'all pick and choose when it's really convenient, don't you? Forever. Jesus Christ. And I know that that's something in my religion that some man would be very cautious to even date me knowing that I have been sealed to my husband because that would mean that whatever marriage we have here would not. Oh, he has no hearing, but can he read? Good question. Extend beyond this life, if that makes sense. Just, you know, kind of as a frame it of does reference not. for where I am. It does not make sense. Girl, I love you so much, girl. You need therapy. You need a spa day. I'm going to give this woman the benefit of the doubt. She cannot divorce him. She can't divorce him based off her fucking religion. She can divorce him based off her alleged values. She's Oh, Dr. John is going to handle this so much better. But like if I had a caller like this and obviously I don't do therapy, I just do like regular life advice stuff when therapy isn't, you know, you're doing that with your therapist. I do the other stuff, the philosophy stuff. If I was going to look at this in a philosophy way, again, we'd go down to what is the consciousness again. OK, therapy helps you with your mental health and like your which overlaps. But like we're talking about your consciousness and then what is the uh, commitment we've made to that consciousness that is your husband. Right. Outside of God. What is the commitment? It's a construct. It's made up. But are you going to commit to this made up thing you've consented to? Because it is made up. Everything we do is made up. It's a made up commitment that I've married my husband. But I married him committing to that construct. Matt. Sure. I, I mean, I don't have any reference point for your religious background, but I would say based on what you just said, if there is a, if this is a cosmic linkage, if this is a forever together, mm -hmm. what's the rush? Mm. If you truly believe that. Mm -hmm. And I do. And I know everything is going to work out. I know God's got a plan. And in the end, it's going to be. But you don't like his great. plan. Ooh, true, 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 true. That's the problem. That's a problem. Life is suffering, whether you have your joy or not, whether you've been a five or not, whether you think you know everything about a life, life itself is suffering. Existing is suffering. Taking a shit is suffering. Life is suffering. But I don't think God or the universe gives you more than you can handle. I do believe that. I'm woo-woo enough to believe that you don't get more than you can handle. You only feel like you can't handle it. But if it is connected to your joy, if it is truly what is healthy, you can absolutely make it through the suffering. You can absolutely handle the burden. I believe this so deep in my soul. <laughs> I do. I do. I don't like it. You and don't I like can't it. help but think with 30 more years in me, in this life, would it... <sighs> You know, is this idea of finding somebody to have some companionship with for the next 20, 30 years. I know where I, I can tell what you're thinking and you I'm fighting no, it. Can no, no, you no, tell that? Yeah, you don't, know, you don't know what I'm thinking. You don't know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, oh, oh, I'm thinking oh, oh. how hard this is. Yep. Um, And ultimately, my 
my biggest, you know, I've got an eight year old, like I said, my next oldest is 16 and my, you know, I've got older kids out of the house and he is my biggest concern at this point is this eight year old that I have still at home. And in no way would I ever do anything that would, you know, make life harder for him or jeopardize my relationship with him Mm. for sure. Yeah. Well, again, not a judgment question, but just a. Yeah, totally. I think um, LJ says still no judgment from me, just compassion for sure. Compassion means to suffer with, though. So I can't actually have compassion for a situation that I don't I can't like I can suffer with her, but I can't empathize with her because I I can only sympathize. Right. Because like I'm a death do us part kind of person. If you think you have a cosmic connection, like you definitely can't do anything. But that's the problem. The problem is when I hear the religious, God bless them, talk about picking and choosing when things get hard. Oh, I do things that are against my book or against my religion or against my Torah or whatever it is. They pick and choose. It's like you don't think you have a cosmic connection. You cannot believe in God this hard and fuck around with his rules. That easy girl. Like that's what I'm saying. You want to tell me you believe in God and this cosmic connection? You want to fuck around with the rules? You think you married him in this and the next life? So major sympathy, right? This is hard. But this is why I say nobody believes their bullshit. Nobody believes their fucking bullshit. Nobody believes in their fucking God. Nobody believes in anything. Because when shit gets tested, y'all pussy out. So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's easy to talk a big game when life is easy. It's easy. It's easy. When shit hits the fan, it's fucking hard. Okay? So again, no judgment. Because human's going to human. Right? But... Okay. A question, question. Curiosity question. Mm-hmm. Would you be showing that eight-year-old that there is a boundary to forever? Ooh. There comes a day when mom moves on. What do you think? And I know what all you guys are going to say. Well, don't you want to show your eight-year-old that you're allowed to leave a relationship when you're unhappy? Yes, bitch. If your husband's hitting you. If your wife is raping you, if they're stealing all your money, this man got in a horrible accident while out with you and your eight kids, and you're just going to done ditch him? You're just going to done ditch him. Well, saying you believe in God, like, again, no judgment, girl. Humans are going to human. Life is very hard. This is very difficult. I'm mostly just giving people who haven't been in the situation yet the tools, not the people who are in it, who are struggling, who are literally like she, this woman, all of my spoons. Like, I want to give her all of my spoons and all of my heart, right? Okay. But for the people who have yet to get married, who have yet to have kids, who are in the beginning stage of, stages of these things, who, again, criticize me for dating the way I date, you all better prove to me you're as serious about commitment as I am and as my partner is. And we're as serious about doing life together because this is the real shit that happens in life. You're thinking about, oh, what if he doesn't like the fact that I play D&D or like, what if we don't like the fact that we <laughs> I'm talking about real shit happening. Right. And I'm talking about proving that to your kids and being consistent. And I'm talking about why we take it so seriously in my home. If God forbid there was like cheating. Right. Like if God forbid there was something horrendously malicious going on, ditching your spouse. Bro, I get it. Sometimes you don't have money, family situations, but you're not ditching them. You're not divorcing them. There's no one better. Like if you actually think you're connecting on the cosmos, your soulmate, again, if you think you're settling, if you're with somebody that you're like, eh, about, I'm not talking about you, girl, go get your divorce. I'm talking about the people who claim I have found the one. I have found the true person, right? If you're not settling, if you actually think you are like connected to this person in a very significant way, there is no one better. And sickness and in health matters. Do you get it? Oh, I am a Taurus. You're right, Kenny. Brittany has a Venus in Taurus. She's probably more loyal than most. Actually, true. I'm a very loyal fucking bitch. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess I'll... I'll... I, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of telling you what I really just think. Just give me permission, John. <laughs> no, just, no chance. Just tell me what I want to hear. Nobody ever does. <laughs> Listen, no. I, 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 <sighs> Yo. Cam Cam says my mom was in a car accident. She got battery, battery acid burns from the waist down. 
Her son died and it disabled her. My parents stayed together. It was difficult, but it was never an option. Bro, that's gnarly. That's insane. I just shared a story on my Discord about an, um, uh, people in Iraq who were separated because of the Taliban or ISIS. And the husband waited nine years for the return of his wife, never remarried, never thought about moving on. She was enslaved, assaulted multiple times, graped. Horrible things happened to her. When he finally found out she was still alive, finally found out they could free her, she came back and they had a second wedding to re-get married. He never left her. She always held out. She was so shocked he never remarried. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I hear a woman who deeply loves her husband. Uh I hear a woman who has not yet opened her hands up to the fact that yeah, so uh, people are new to this. If you guys are just walking into the story, she has eight kids. Her husband got in a horrible accident while bike riding. Um, there's a lot of details I'm not going to go into, but basically, technically, someone did come into her life who's his one of his friends, and she noticed herself wishing she could maybe move on with life. And so now she's at this point where she's like, should I get a divorce to move on, right? You can't control any of this. And every step of the way, you're continuing to control, continue to try to control, and continue to try to control, even to the point that you got everybody together to plan for the end, that you don't get to decide. And so there's no possible way I'm going to sit in judgment of you on any decision that you make. I do believe totally. that you get to choose to feel alive and to be alive in whatever context you find. Mm -hmm. I also believe that for sickness and in health and covenant, I don't know, still means something. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think of what my life would be. I want to give her props, too. That was her being honest. I see you, yeah, yeah. Like, yes, just give me permission, Dr. John. I get you, girl. I get it. I understand the need to just want the permission. But that is what temptation is. To get permission for something I know is wrong. So I'll do a cognitive dissonance thing. I'll blame my partner. I'll say life was unfair to me. And now I have to make a decision that I promised I never would make. Right? Right? I think, Um. oh, interesting. Growling says, do whatever you want. Just have the decency of never claiming you're capable of love. Um, I don't know what that means, right? I don't know if they're incapable of love, right? Um, right? I think, like, this is the point is, like, how do you view relationships? Like, I mean it when I say, like, I refuse to settle. I will only end up with the person that I think is, like, genuinely made for me. And though I think there are lots of people who are like that, he's the first one I came around to. First one I met and the only one I'll ever commit to through sickness and in health till death do us part and maybe even after. Be like dating Diane who's like, no, 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 I still love this guy. I'm linked cosmically forever to this guy. I'm still going to go <laughs> take care of him every week. I just needed some cover so See? you and I could hook up. See? That's what I said. I was like, yeah, you – like, it's different if it was pre-negotiated. Like I said, I'm totally about that. Pre-negotiate. Tell your partner they can move on. But, like, you know what I mean? It's hard to take care of a spouse that's disabled and then to marry somebody else or be with somebody else. That's a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, oh. There are yeah, certainly men that will take you I'm, up on that. I just, I've talked to a couple friends, and that's what I said. It's like, say I go ahead and do this. Like, what guy in his right mind? Oh, there'll be a line of them, Diane. There's a bunch of just that on. <laughs> shady people out there. No, they'll, they'll be there. They'll be there. Um, they'll be there, no question. But it all comes back to you. It comes back to you. And just talking to you. I think you're exhausted. Same. Girl needs a spa Every day. Plan you've made along. Someone get this girl a girl's day, a vacation. Someone get this girl, uh, like so much of life is just stress. So much of what we think we can't handle in life is because it is stressful. You just need a breather. It's like when you feel yourself suffocating in a balloon, just like pop a little hole in it and go. <sighs> you know what I mean? The stress is real, girls. Get yourself a spa day.
get yourself a moment to breathe. You're allowed to have these doubts in your head that you won't be capable, but you are more than capable. Along the way, for the last five years, has not worked out as you wanted it to. And so your next option to try to control what happens next is what it sounds like to me to violate one of your core tenets, one of your core beliefs religiously, one of mm. your core beliefs in love. Mm. Because you're real lonely. Mm. And you're really exhausted. Amen. Get this girl a spot but day. again, it looks like yet another attempt to control what <gasps> happens next because you've been out of control for five years. And I would suggest before you go file for divorce, you spend some time with open hands and fully leaning into, probably with your kids too. I don't control any of the outcomes now. And I'm mm. going to stop racing and seeking to try to find another outcome that I can control. And God almighty, yes, it feels good when people reach out. That feels good when you've been married and you're happily married. It feels good when somebody reaches out and tells you they miss you or they like you or checking in on you. Mm -hmm. I would tell you to take a break. Yes, Dr. John. Take a break yes. from visiting yes. for a bit. Take yeah. a break from the divorce conversation for a bit. Take yes, a break from talking to this guy for a bit. Yes, ma'am. And maybe your prayer switches from... Okay, what about this? Okay, what about this? Okay, what about this? And instead, your prayer switches to, I've got no control, and I've got no power. <sighs> Please lead me into what comes next. Mm. And again, I don't know your faith tradition. I don't, don't know your religious tradition. I know you've been trying to control stuff for a long, long time. <laughs> So sorry, I can't give you I can't give you my truest, deepest thoughts on this one. Um, what I can tell you is unhook all the brakes. Yeah. And just sit for a minute. Yeah. Based. Maybe talk to your kids. Maybe get some wisdom from your friends. But seek to be alive outside of some new romantic relationship for just a minute. Amen, amen, seek to be amen. At peace. Seek amen, to open amen. your hands and say, okay, I control nothing. Yes. Get me through tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And really <sighs> dig in on the promises that you made for forever. Yeah. Because you're the one that made them, and if you make this other choice, you're going to be the one that breaks them. Oof! And Diane's going to have to live with Diane. Oh! <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your bravery. You're awesome. Call anytime. Dr. John is so good, bros. He is like so good. Yes. Okay. See? Okay. These are the vibes I like in a person, which is to say, have compassion. This is hard. We are not asking you to ignore that it is hard. We are not saying you are evil. We are not saying you are malicious. We are saying you are drowning in your pain and making decisions that are making you feel guilty because they betray your values. Shame is when you betray the values of the bubble, the expectation of culture. And guilt is when you've betrayed your own values, right? So, of course, she had temptation knock on her door. A man took interest in her that she's known. A man asked her, how are you doing? How can I help you? She started to feel alive again. She asked herself, wait, could I see myself doing this and before acting on it which I think is important she called Dr. John she talked to her friends she said hey like what does it mean to have somebody look at me after five years of watching my husband experience something so traumatic right and then they had to have a conversation or she had to have a conversation with herself and then she didn't know what to do and because she didn't know what to do she reached out to somebody who could know what to do so major props to her because that's really great right you know at the end of the day, temptation will arise. You will feel like I've lost my mind. That's why I'm not lenient on people who make excuses for bad behavior. Because again, bad is subjective. I'll give you that. But you can't tell me, oh yeah, I think cheating is wrong. But when I cheated on my wife, oh, I was just in a bad place. Oh, she made me do it. Oh, I think, you know, stabbing my kids with a knife is wrong. But that kid really pissed me off today, Brittany. It's like, oh, okay, 
Okay. Okay. I want there to be a commitment to the way we say we are as a character, right? Like my sense of character. I want to say I'm Brittany and I believe in loyalty and commitment and I would never make the vow of commitment unless I meant it with every fiber of my being. Um, my word is my bond. I am committed to my reputation. I would never say yes to a marriage unless I was 1000% committed. All those fuckers who are making a bet that I'll be divorced in a year because you think I'm sad and lonely and pathetic as you are. You literally are the reason people are having a struggle in loneliness. You are literally the reason why no one is committed. Who wants to be committed to such a grumpy piece of shit, right? Well, everybody else in my life is so excited that I finally found the person that they know I'm going to not only be committed to, but be so happy with, right? Right? Because I did not say yes to the first guy who asked me to marry him because I did not say yes and settle because I waited until the right person. Oh, I'm going to ditch you guys right now to go hang out with him. I love him so much. The consciousness that is my husband cannot be replaced with someone better. What does that even mean? mean how dare you even imply there is someone better I would never have made this decision loosely and I'm certainly not gonna make I'm not gonna go back on my vows even in 30 or 50 years when things do get harder you think we don't know that you think with the rise of cancer and the rise of disease, we're not going to have illnesses? Girls, get ready for Brittany being 88 years old and be like, okay, you guys, today I got cancer. Like, I'm going to get cancer. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to go through it. You are all crazy if you think with the food we're eating, with the chemicals in our water, we're not all going to get diseases, girls. You crazy. We're all going to be chronically very ill. You know what I mean? Oh, please. Uh, 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 no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Maddox says it tells me more if you've been married multiple times than if you waited to marry. It does say a lot. I'm sorry, but it says something. It says you went through legal paperwork that many times and got it wrong that many times. Girl, you're crazy. If you sign up for marriage, get ready, kids. Your kids are going to be fucked up. You're going to be fucked up. You know, things are not getting better. Things are getting more complicated. And things are getting harder. That's why so many people are vouching are, are deciding not to have children. Because the rise of issues within our children and our school systems and our lives and our job, like everything is getting a little bit harder in a different way, right? This idea that we're just going to get married and everyone's going to be healthy till the day we die. I don't know what bubble you're in, but nobody in my circles are going without a diagnosis. Everybody got something right now. So again, I don't know what bubble you're in where everything goes perfect. Can't be me. Can't be my bubble. Mm -mm. Can't be my bubble. Oscar Rodriguez with the super chat. Let's go. Colon cancer is on the rise in folks in their 20s, people. Let's go. Let's get ready. Ugh. I get it. Everybody wants something that's like perfect and convenient, and I get it. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't listen to these fucking red pillars, okay, who are telling you, oh, put up with your guy if he cheats. Put up with your guy if he abuses you. Don't listen to them. Listen to Auntie Brittany. Listen to Auntie Simon. I'm going to tell you this right now. Listen to Mama Simon. Okay? Listen to me right now. Don't settle. You wait it out until you find the right person to facilitate your joy and their joy. You wait it out until there is joy to be had. Because even in suffering, joy remains. Even in suffering, even when you're in your room and you're thinking, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? If you meditate and go back to the present, you know what you're doing with your life. You're living it. You're living it. You're not running away from it. Okay. You're not abandoning it. You're going to live it. You can shift it. You can move it. You can update it. But do not abandon your life. Do not abandon your vows. But don't make vows that you don't mean. If you're not 1000% sure, if you're not 1000% on the same page, make sure you're not convincing yourself that you're sure. Make sure you're not convincing yourself that like, yeah, I love this person, right? Yeah, it's going to work. No. Test it and test it and test it. And test it in a way that's reasonable. Make sure you guys agree on values. Make sure you've had these conversations. Okay? <sighs> if you're not sure, don't get married. If you're not sure, don't have a kid. 
If you're not sure, become sure. And don't deceive yourself into thinking you're sure. That is the worst thing. Somebody asked me earlier, I don't remember who you were, but I love you. How do you know yourself? You know yourself when you don't have to double guess if you're sure. Now, it's healthy to be questionable or questioning. Like I told the story about how I got engaged and I went to my friend brother and I said, hey, you have to help me double check. You're part of my checklist. Do you think this is my borderline? Because I have a little bit of doubt that I'm making a mistake, but of my judgment, not of him. I'm afraid that I'm clouded. It's my judgment of myself, not of him. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm not triggered. I'm pretty sure this isn't borderline. I'm pretty sure I'm healthy. But my brother is a part of my checklist when I'm feeling like, oh, I just want to make sure that I'm not splitting. He's a part of my checklist. And he goes, no, I'm looking at you. I think you're good. And I was like, okay, because I think I'm good, but I want to make sure I'm good. You know, because I don't want to deceive myself, which is so easy, right? Just like this lady who's so, who's so sweet, so kind, deceived herself into thinking, if I just get a divorce, everything will work out. No, girl, you're stressed. You are blinded. It's okay. Sometimes it's great to talk to yourself, confirm with others, go back to yourself. What if she had a friend who said, oh, yeah, girl, divorce him. Yeah, girl, divorce him. She would still need to check with herself. So let's say this, this woman went to her friend. So she consulted with herself and said, man, I really think if I get a divorce, it's all going to work out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I believe. I'm going to, I'm going to shit all over my, my cosmic connection. I'm going to shit all over my religion. I'm going to shit all over my marriage. Yeah. 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 I bet if I get divorced, everything will work out. So she goes to her friends and her friends say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should get a divorce girl. That's what you should do. Then she comes back and meditates with herself, sits with her God. And actually says, okay, Diane, do I really think that this is the man that I am connected to in heaven and on earth? Do I really believe in God? Do I really believe in my marriage? What am I doing? Of course my friends aren't right. Of course they're not right. What am I doing? She consulted with herself, with her environment, her existence, and back to herself. When you really have a conversation with your real, joyful, healthy self, the truth comes out. When you have a conversation with your tired, stressed, triggered, confused, exhausted self, you're getting an answer that sounds good. But is it really good? Right? And Dr. John did it for her. He was the existence she conferred with that she had the conversation with, that she double checked with. You know what I mean? And she got the opportunity to say out loud, just tell me, just tell me I can do this. Just give me permission to act outside my values. And he was like, I can't do that for you, girly. So what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Ari says marriage is an inherently religious or spiritual institution. No, obviously not, girl. I'm an atheist. What are you talking about? Obviously not. But for this lady, it is. So we have to jump into her bubble and give her that advice. If you were talking to me, I don't know if you were talking to somebody else. Okay, let me move up. Um, yeah, Ingrid, yes. What am I doing with my life? I'm living it. That's it, girls. That's it. Live your life. That's what you're doing. <sighs> Growling says, wait, no, it doesn't. Even the thought of thinking life is either joy or suffering is us projecting our narcissism onto the reality. Well, it's both, right? Like life is suffering. And if you're able to find your joy, the suffering is just living your life. That's just normal. But if you are without joy and you just know what happiness is, it's really hard to maintain consistency with your values when things get tough. And that's why I think people fall into temptation, right? Ari says, I don't get why you can't say, I don't know how long this relationship is for. I think I do that in um, friendships. I do that in a lot of things, not romantic. I refuse to marry 
or date somebody that isn't long-term because that's the category of dating I'm doing. You can do that and other people can do that. You guys can play the game of like, I don't know how long this relationship will last, but then you're not dating in my category. So definitely don't listen to my advice, right? Go listen to somebody else. Just like the red pillar shouldn't listen to my advice. They're not dating the same way I'm dating. If you're a woman who dates in red pill bubbles, like you can't use my advice because it wouldn't make sense, right? Like my advice only works for people who want long-term commitment and think and want to marry like the literal consciousness that's like made for their consciousness, you know what I'm saying? So like, obviously you can't like use my advice if you're dating short term, right? Oscar says, thank you for the super chat. I mean, it's your life. Do, uh, do you want, do what you want, stay or leave. Life is short. Just do not ask the world what you would never do for it. Mm, I guess, I suppose. Yeah. Um, let me see. Brittany says it over and over again. Go ahead and settle if that's what you want. Leave whatever lifestyle you want. Exactly. Like do whatever you want, right? But make sure you know what you're doing. Like, I think marriage is purely is business contract. Nothing is wrong. Just be as honest about it. Exactly. If you think of marriage as a, a, a contract, you do you. Just be honest with the process. And then meet people who also believe that. Lots of people believe that about marriage. So you have to be with those people. I think what happens, though, is that the people who think it's just a contract end up with people who want something more. And so the people who want something more end up settling for those people because they think, like, but I love them. So? like. This is about more than love, girl. You know what I mean? So again, you have to make sure that you're making the decision ahead of time that kind of coincides with your values, which is why, again, like don't settle. Um, don't settle too. Don't settle for somebody who wants that, who wants more from you than you can give. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I'm just reading through your comments. Um, Stavros, I don't know how to answer your question. Do not use an oath and in Matthew to swear not at all. How do you think that applies to marital oaths? I don't know how to answer that question. How do you define joy versus happiness? I have a video about this, actually. It's a really great video. Happiness is an emotion. It comes and goes like sadness. Joy is the relationship you're having with your consciousness existing in existence. It's about really recognizing like who you are, what you're doing on the planet, really finding your joy in the thing that grounds you. So you can be a two who's joyful. You can be a five who's joyful. They're just experiencing it differently. So it's about being grounded in your sense of self, in your sense of reality, to the point where it's like a full radical acceptance. No matter how introspective you are in the journey of like macro versus micro, you're having a relationship with a consistency. Like you ever meet those people who have gone through like World War II, have lost like 10 of their kids, their wife died on them, and they're like the most joyful people. They have such a grounding of joyfulness in their life that it's not about being happy. It's about being joyful. Those people are like, found in all kinds of bubbles, all introspective bubbles. They're found in two, three, four, fives. They're found in all walks of life. They're experiencing a relationship with joy, not just happiness, right? Because if you know anything about life, uh, it's not always happy, but it can be always joyful because it's about the consciousness, the singular consciousness, having that relationship with it. You know what I mean? Ah. <clears throat> <sighs> Oh, okay, Gary, I see your comments. We're good. We're good. Thank you for the clarification. Um, just making sure I'm caught up on the comments. Fashas, have you been, wait, have you been, Kidology hasn't streamed in so long I haven't seen anymore. Well, Kidology just put out a video. She's active. I think she's, isn't she moving or something? Or maybe she's done moving. Um, I haven't seen her stream, but I did just see her put out a video about men in the Barbie movie. So that happened. Um, love that you guys are all talking in chat. I'm just moving through your comments. Um, Brit, one question. My sister is getting married next month, but her fiance was the one who always wanted it for years, but she didn't. I get the feeling that she's not into it. Should I talk to her? I mean, depending on how close you are, like, yeah, 
Like I'm obnoxiously in people's business if I feel like they're important to me. I'm like, what are you doing? What is this? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? What's going on? So yeah, if you think she's going to end up in a divorce, if you think she's open to ending up in a divorce, if you think the divorce is something she's avoiding, yeah, it's your sister. Bring it up. Be like, hey, I love you. No judgment. Just wondering if you're good. You know, you don't have to say yes to this. You know, because I think a lot of people feel pressured. They're like, I love this person. They're a great person. Why shouldn't I want to be with them? But something in their consciousness is telling them like, this isn't the person they want to grow old with. But how do you break up a great relationship with somebody? And it's because they weren't the one. They, the one out of a million. Let's say, you know how people always say like, there's the one in the universe. I don't think there's literally one. I think there's a group of ones. Does that make, oh, that's going to be confusing with the levels. But there's a group of soulmates. Oh God. No matter what language I use, it's going to piss off somebody. But there's a group of people that are literally made for you. I believe this. This is a belief. This is not something that is a fact. I don't know this. This is a belief. And I believe we have to meet those people in order to have the long lasting relationships otherwise that are joyful and really everything you could ever want in a relationship, like the ideal. And then there's the people you settle for where you can have happy enough relationships. It's good enough. It gets you through life. And then there's the relationships that eventually crumble and divorce and you feel alone even in your marriage. And I'm worried about those people because I'm like, hey, you don't have to do this. But I think sometimes people feel pressure to get married to a long life partner they've had that have it's been going well, but it's not quite exactly what they wanted. And so I, you know, I always talk to people. I'm like, hey, you can love someone and not be with them. It could, you could love someone and not be with them. But, you know, be honest about it. Don't deceive someone into marriage. Don't deceive yourself so you can convince yourself to marry them. Be honest. But being honest is hard. Similar to ideas of alignment, self or self-fulfillment. Oh, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know if that's to me. I'm going to ignore that. Sorry, I read it out loud. My bad. Kid just moved to Northern Britain. Oh, fun. Oh, that's great. Ah, okay, Vash was talking. Never mind, Vash, you got this. You guys are talking amongst each other. This chat is so active right now. I appreciate this energy, bros. Okay, okay, okay. I love this. Her fiance is amazing, dude, but she was never the marriage with kids type. I'm very close to her, so yeah. Man, that's a bummer. It's hard, man. It's hard. You just meet so many great people in the universe and so many great people in our lives. And then, you know, people go, oh, just makes sense. You should get married now. But like, uh, maybe it doesn't make sense for that. You know, maybe maybe your sister should listen to her intuition. Maybe it's just the way she is. Maybe they've already talked about it and they're OK with making the commitment, even if they have to get divorced. I would just make sure everyone's talked it out. See, in the Catholic bubble, you have to go to a marriage counseling with a priest uh, which is kind of hilarious because, you know, they're priests. But you have to go to marriage counseling before you get married to make sure you're healthy and committed. So even if you get engaged quickly, you still have to do it and they have to approve your marriage, which most of the priests fuck up on and they do it poorly, in my opinion. But, you know, it's kind of nice to have some sort of a buffer. I kind of believe in that, too. It's like, hey, I'm just confer confirming. The problem is if you don't have a good grounding people around you, if you don't have good, healthy people around you, they'll give you bad advice. That's the problem. I think a lot of people don't have the healthiest people around them, um, and that's the problem. And so when you get advice from them, they don't have your best intentions. They are biased to the point where they're going to move you in a direction. And so I think if you're her brother and you're close to her in that way, you'd be a great candidate for just checking in on her because you're not invested in them breaking up or getting together. You're invested in their joy. So you would be a great candidate for that. Okay, guys, with that said, uh, it's 10 p.m. Thank you so much for joining me. This was a great stream time for me. I think I might keep it up. So 6 p.m. CEST to 10 p.m., four hours. I feel pretty good about that. That's, what is that? Um, ooh, what time is that, Eastern? I said it on the Discord, but now I've forgotten what time that was, and I don't have the spoons to do the time difference. But either way, yeah, that was a pretty good time. So on Monday, I'm going to try to stream at this time again, assuming you don't have any doctor's appointments or anything. Uh, what is it? Noon Eastern. Yeah, I think it's going to be the new stream time, maybe. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. PST. I don't know. We'll see. But I definitely feel good about this time. I am getting a little bit of a hangry headache. Uh, so I got it or a hungry headache. I got to go eat something. OK, great stream. Thank you so much for being here. I will make this a members only stream, but then I'll clip it for you guys. Oh, my God, I didn't record it again. Never mind. This is going to stay up. Fuck. Every time I forget to press record on my OBS, you guys are going to get the streams without being members only. Because if I don't record it at a high quality, it's not worth it. It's not worth clipping it to me. So fine. 
this video will not be members only oh, because I did not record it and I refuse to clip it when it's not high quality. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Okay. <sighs> Never mind. Enjoy it. If you have to watch this back, great. Give it a thumbs up. Give it an emoji a comment. Please boost this video. Share it with your family and friends. Make the cult bigger. <laughs> okay. Talk to you guys later. I love you. Bye. Oh my God. Hilarious.